Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Sorry about the wait, but uh, Molly got home right as I was about ready to go live with groceries. So I had to pull them all out of the vehicle and put them all away. Yeah, it was a Sam's Club trip. Yeah, it was a Sam's Club trip, so. Yeah, she got back right as I was before I got to go live. Literally. And how is everybody doing this evening? Yeah, I said tonight's chat is just uh, whatever happens. I was out working in the yard for most of the day, running a few errands here and there, ran out of weed eater line, looked for it for an hour and 15 minutes, then I just went and bought some. So hello, Cecilia. Hello, Grace. Hello, Lori. And hello, Deb. Not in any particular order. Sorry for just being late. Hope everybody is doing fine. Well, you're welcome. Uh, let's just do this one tonight. Yep, so I'm out there working in the yard, trying to get it all cleaned up. Because I haven't worked on in the yard in quite some time. I mean, say hi to peaceful Des for me. Huh? Say hi to Des. Oh, hi, Des. Is she in the chat? Yeah. Oh. Hi, Des. How you doing? What you doing, Coco? Yeah, my little doggy. Oh, how's how's your project going? Uh, my crochet. I'm still working on it. She says she's still working on it. Yes, Coco. I see you there. I see you. I see you. I just started a new scheme. Oh, she says she's starting a new scheme. Oh, well, uh, Deb's going on an SCA event on um, the 3rd of May. What is SCA? Um, the reenactment like my mom used to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's getting all her camping stuff ready. Well, I hope you have fun. Uh, great. Uh, Slip at my desk and chair all day. <laughs> That's what uh, Des did. Are you able to see the chat yet? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Molly's finally uh, able to pull up the chat and stuff, so. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this here. And paste that and do that. Oh, let me go and pin that at the top of the page. Already in. Somebody say something, please. That stupid heart is right in the way. There we go. And pin message. There we go. Uh, Oh, three-day uh, camp out with a potluck. Ooh. So we'll be doing that on the 17th through the 21st this year. So we'll be heading up there to northern Arkansas. What yarn? No scooter. I'm, I'm on my TV. You should talk about the yarn from... Uh Oh. Yes, I pet you. I pet you. I pet you. Uh, be right back. Need to see a uh, bush. Okay. What is it with you? What is it with you? What is it? What is it? Yeah, so I've just been uh, taking care of a portion of the yard that's been neglected for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a while. So yeah, I need to clean out the front porch area and just clean up around the house. I didn't think anybody would want to see me video uh, that. No scooter. Did you get a new toy? Yeah. Of 
Apparently, he got a new toy. He's trying to show it off. Here, here. Let me see it. Uh, we'll show the folks. Come here. Nope. He doesn't want you to see. Yeah. He got one of those little squeaky rope horses. Yes. Oh, and I got a part of it. Now you want to play tug of war? Now you want to play tug of war? See, one of these little rope horses. In here. Go play. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Blake, how's it going? Yeah, it was, what, 81 today, 82, about, uh, what, 80% humidity today. It reminded me back in uh, August in the Phoenix area, but a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know where Colin or, um, or Cliffy, Cliff is probably uh, in his garden trying to figure that off. Hi, Des. How you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. How's everything there in Florida? Um, not too bad, actually. It was 72. To, from what I could tell from, um, I don't want to say her name. Starts with an A. Uh -huh. um, it's, she's saying it's 72 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been inside. I slept at my desk. I, I got up this morning at like 7 o'clock. Then, then it was like 12, and then it was four and then it was almost eight o'clock and i'm like why am i sleeping in my chair all day because you're probably catching up on some well-needed rest i've been going to bed at 12 and getting up at six i mean i used to go to i used to work two or three jobs sometimes four jobs and get about three hours of sleep well now that i'm 60 you know my body's different but still you know it's just like what is it with me sleeping all day i said oh gosh i'm getting old now <laughs> I gotta have all those naps in. I'm not a nap person unless I don't feel good. Yeah, probably and the allergies. Okay. Huh? Probably the allergies. I have no allergies. Uh, yeah, allergies. You're sleeping. Allergies. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and there's Rob. How you doing, Rob? Mr. Corn Fed Experience. Hey, Corn Fed. I've got Mike and. Mike and Terry over here, and I got you over here. I got you a big and big sound them on me almost mute. <laughs> Lowest as can go. <clears throat> so, what's been going on with you guys? Uh, let's see, just work, and, and now I got a, an armadillo tearing up my yard. Oh, fun! Yeah, I was kind of hoping he would move out to the forest, but no. no. He's <laughs> There must be something in the ground that he likes around you. Yeah, it's called grubs. <laughs> here, let me relocate you. Find some grub over here. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's living underneath the house, which is bad. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't want him digging up uh, underneath the, the the pillars of the house or anything and then having that come down. Yeah, that's that all you need is your house to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Part of the house is <laughs> diggle. Yeah. Um, that, that's I, yeah, I volunteer at the um, birth cottage, and it's up on um, Brooks. It's an old bungalow. So yeah, that's where it's a birth center, but um, it's we get a lot of like animals dying under there, or cats catching and killing under there. So yeah. we constantly have to have the exterminators come out because we get fleas and whatever else that comes from dead carcasses up mm -hmm. underneath our house. It's the worst. It's like when that happens. I can't come back until they're all gone because <laughs> mosquitoes, ants, and, al and um, fleas, I just break out and scar. I mean, I just I can't stop. <clears throat> but Molly, I know you're listening and you're watching. Um, last year, Petals was the 8th, and, 8th through the 10th of September. Right now, they're doing one this weekend, the antique one. I'm not going to that one. My cousin's going out of town to Italy out of the country to Italy for three weeks. 
so she's my boss. <laughs> where I volunteer. So I won't be going anywhere, but I'm definitely going to try. I'm waiting to see what they bring up on pedals in September, and I'll let you know if you want to know about it. Yeah, we're doing the Arkansas one in May. Yeah, I'm not doing any. See, I even have to rent a car and everything else. And so I, I'm trying to save all my money for pedals because I want to go. I want to do Wednesday through Sunday. So leave here on a Wednesday, get up there, go check out the towns around it. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't go. To, I went to the event and I got to meet <clears throat> Jason and Brooke from Cog Hill. And we tried going around my wheelchair. It's not very friendly for handicap um, accessibility. Um, so not for a wheelchair, a walker, a mobile, you know, the electric wheelchairs, somebody had that. They couldn't get around either. So I ended up getting in the car and going up to lead Alabama and going to Bucky's and hung out at Bucky's for a bunch of, <laughs> and, just, and bought, I bought like too much stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then I went to Birmingham, Alabama and had like an Ollie's and a couple of stores there that we don't have here in Tallahassee. And then went back to the hotel and hung out with everybody. And they have a, um, a buffet there, Shoney's. It's the Shoney's Inn. So they have a Shoney's buffet there. So you get free breakfast from the buffet. And then you worry about your dinner and your lunch. So, you it's know, one meal's already paid for it. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Now you'd be able to make the one in Houston. And uh, was it uh, January, February? Is it March or is it April? It's probably in April. It's April, yeah. 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 And that's going to be with Devil Dog. Yeah, I would love to, but uh, is that? I think that's next year, though, right? Yes, yeah, the yeah. 2025, yeah. Yeah, then I might have to start saving money for that and figure out how to get there because I've never driven long that long of a distance. Jamison is the longest I've ever driven um, mm -hmm. to go anywhere. So being the same, I'd have to stop and spend the night. And, you know, I don't know how I will do going, going uh, west, driving that far with my daughter. Yeah. It's not that far. Yeah, but for me it is because I didn't get my license until 34, and then I didn't start driving around um, Boston until a few years later, and then I had no car because I didn't need a car. And then I moved down here, and I didn't have a car until my cousin gave me her car. So in reality, I've only driven about 10 years out of my 60 uh -huh. years of being alive. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And I never had to drive the, you know, drive highways and stuff. I go like, if I can, I go like back roads and stuff like that, where it's not so crazy because I get overwhelmed by eighteen wheelers and big trucks and crazy drivers. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, so, well, we got Mr. Fox at outdoors. Just now, to go ahead and join the <laughs> chat. Good evening. Hi, Fox at outdoors. It's Cliffy. That's Mr. Cliff, aka Cliff. He's one of the other gardeners we uh, we collab with. Awesome, yeah. I came. I think I've got out there. I tried tomatoes, but because I'm in a townhouse, you got two parking spaces in front. The heat from the driveway and pure sun killed my tomatoes last year. They got uh, to be about this big, and that was it. <laughs> uh, the sun, yeah. The heat got it to them, yeah. Yeah, there was no. That, that's it from my yard. I mean, I've got lantana, Mexican heather, and aloe out there, but that's about all I can grow out front. Everything else just dies. Ah, bummer. Yeah. And my yard, I mean, my yard's like eight steps across and four steps this way, you know? So there's not a lot. One day I'll be out of this townhouse. Well, hopefully it'll be for a really good place. Yeah. Something with a little more yard. <laughs> a little bit more yard. Not, not a whole lot yard. yard. Not a whole yeah, lot of yard, but a little bit yard. Yeah, my kids want to, uh, well, my kids aren't kids, they're adult kids, but they want to yeah. throw a vegetable garden. So, you know, I want to have like tomato, peppers, the usual, but then I want acorn squash, butternut squash, um, sweet potatoes. I just don't have the room here to grow at Foxit. And out back, I can't even step out back. I mean, I got a patio, but it's all, um, it's all pine trees and mosquitoes and i can't step foot out back uh, there's a water reservoir in the back behind our townhomes and forget it in front there's just no way i can't put anything out front i'm not allowed it, i'm in a townhouse community so you have to abide by the rules yeah 
So no cover shade or anything like that up front. Darn HOAs. Yeah, the HOA is not as strong as other HOAs, yeah. but they don't want it to look um, crappy. I mean, if you look at my street, my street needs a whole, like, plow out and put all new. They want it to look uniform is what it is. Yeah, so I got to buy, you know, you can't have certain things out there. Yeah, the sea of sameness. But, I mean, I have a flag out there, um, my garden flag. I have a bird bath. I'm, like, one of the few people that have flowers out front, you know, so... Because I can't grow any grass there. The grass doesn't grow. But, yeah, I try to make it as presentable as possible. Yeah. Cliff, you can come up. Des doesn't bite unless you want her to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just come up here doesn't mean you can't come up. I think I can have, like, ten people up. Yeah. If you're paying 10, yeah. yeah. That's where I can get some of the other amenities so I can put up on the uh, screen. The backdrop, my logo. Yeah, I just have the I don't I have the cheaper version of 10 up. Yeah. <laughs> 10 <Free>. buck version. <laughs> yeah. No, not even the free version, the 10 buck version. I mean it, it, it helps. And yeah, it does. I like it. I like it. Good. Because I like it because I can do the banners, I can do the uh, the branding, and I can do the uh, a couple of the other items that they have. Yeah, I still have StreamYard up on top, but I don't have the bird. So it's not it's not as bad. And I have my logo up in the corner. I don't have the, I don't have the bird, the, the, the duck, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and Cliff, I still have not gotten my book yet. And now we try to find it somewhere else. It's like three times the uh, the expense, just for that little book. So I gotta start digging around. I know that book's around here somewhere. <clears throat> there he is. That sucks. I know. I've been wanting to do a live stream with that so bad. And it's been what four weeks now. God, that's been longer than that, hasn't it? Yeah. See, I want to get my book so I can turn around and talk, talk dirty to people. <laughs> and my soils, my soils book. All right, guys. Talks about dirty. the dirt. I've been dirty all day. Yeah, get the get the dirt on some plants. Get down and dirty. Yeah. Maybe we can help out somebody once I find that. Um, hi, Kathy. How you doing? Yeah. So we get that book. You know, we can you know go around and. You, know, you and I can talk back and forth, and we can talk about you know the soil amendments. Which you know, you want to try and get that perfect balance. Well, there is no perfect balance for all plants. Like I said, like I said, compared to like tomatoes and onions, I mean, you got totally different uh, soils. Oh yeah, onions will pretty much grow in dirt. They don't care. Oh yeah. As long as they get water every once in a while, they're fine. Oh yeah. They don't need like high nutrient soil. Why am I? Staring up at the yeah, plant. they actually want a alkaline soil instead of a uh, acidic soil, like tomatoes, tomatoes, blueberries, uh, stuff like that. Want a little bit more acidic uh, soil, but I'm trying to get those nutrients balanced. So in between six and eight, seven is gonna be your neutral. That's why right, the side amendment stuff and yeah. So when you go to one side to like the, to the sixth side, you're gonna. Your soil is like be able to, um, I guess, because uh, of the neutrality of the uh, soil. When you start going more towards the, uh, um, you know, the bay side towards the alkaline side, you're going to start losing the benefits of certain um, nutrients, but you'll gain more on this side. And same thing when you go back and forth. It's really weird between all the nutrients, how how different they really are. How they're actually available for the plant to pick up. And, and salts are bad. But salts are good at the same time. Depends on the plant that requires it. And Des, for your ant issue, there's um a crystal style form of ant poison that literally just poisons the ants and doesn't do anything else other than that. Yep. And you just sprinkle a little bit of that around your ant hill. Yep. And those ants will be dead in like two days the entire colony done boric acid also no, 
Borax. No, no, not even Borax. It, it comes in that stupid white bottle and has a red and black label on the front. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. Oh, my God. So, like, the crystals are kind of, like, yellowish. But the oh. ants... Are you talking about the uh, Amdro? Yes, the Amdro. Thank you. Yeah, make sure the ants find it. Don't put it on the hole or the mound. Put it six to uh, 12 inches away from the hole. Let them find it. They'll take it. Oh, no, dude. I sprinkle it, like, right around the cone of the hole and, like, on the around hole. It. Yeah, they got to find it. Oh, they won't. Dude, the minute you put that stuff down, they're, like, first ants already on top mm. of it. They're like, ooh, that smells good. And they grab it, and then the rest of them all just pile out. And, dude, within, like, five minutes, all that stuff is gone. Yeah, that's actually ground up uh, corn cobs is what that is. Is what they're using. It's got to be mixed with something else. Yeah, but that's that's the carrier for it. Is the uh, corn cobs. Oh, no. The, you just sprinkle like a tablespoon yeah, you and don't within five it. minutes it's gone. Oh, yeah. And it really, it does not take much of that stuff to uh, wipe out an entire anthill. It says it takes roughly seven to ten days, but nah. In all honesty, it's like four max. Now, I like the max force. Uh, that's a little bit uh, better. Yeah, that, that, that's the, one of the conclusions I got with uh, on that one, Blake, is uh, don't drive with Dez. <laughs> Also, don't drive with me because, um, yeah, semi trucks don't uh, afraid of me. I only freak out if there's one on each side, and I'm stuck between them for a couple of miles. Because I've already had one semi tire blow out on uh, me and a buddy of mine came back from a week long camping trip. We just drove all the way up to North Dakota or South Dakota, and they came all the way back down. And uh, on the way back, we had a tire uh, semi tire blow out next to us. Talk about terrifying. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do have to I say, though, to I do have a lead foot. I have a lead foot on the highway. I do, too. So I'm like, bring it back down from 90. <laughs> I take it easy. But no, I've never had a ticket. I've been in one, I've been in one accident, and it wasn't even my fault. I was the car in the middle. <laughs> the car from, hit me from behind. And push me into the car in front. Blake, wear a seatbelt. I have my seatbelt on, so that's good. Or wear a t-shirt, or wear get a shirt that has that like. <laughs> it looks like a fake belt on it. <laughs> that, and they can't be like, well, you're not wearing your seat. I'm wearing my seatbelt. Yeah, but then they can see right here. Yeah. Depends on the strap you have. Some of them go around. Some of them are lower. Yeah, no, I've got a, I've gotten a speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. Well, was really yeah, young. I never had a ticket, so. I've had yeah. two speeding tickets, but that was shit twenty years ago. That's already off my off my record. I almost had a ticket. I was um I had a conversion van, um, an eighty six Chevy. What was it? Eighty six Chevy Mark II conversion van, and I was up in Boston, and it's a one way one each way, you know. And there was, um, there was, you could pick a left. I had to go to EJ's, and the car in front of me was taking a left that way, so it became like a two lane up the intersection. And there was no cars coming from behind them because I was up high, I could see. So I'm taking my turn, all of a sudden, I get smacked in the right front. This car came out of nowhere. So I'm down the road from the rotary or the roundabout where the state troopers are from, you know, their, their, their barracks or whatever. They come up and they're like, oh, you, you were in the wrong, blah, 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 blah. And I told them what happened. Turned to find out the guy took his girlfriend's car that was unregistered, uninsured, no plate, and he had, a, he had a revoked license. So I got no ticket, no points against my license, nothing. I was like, phew. Yeah, no insurance claim either because they weren't going to – It's because it, the guy's uninsured and yeah, you ain't getting squats so and all the damage uh, comes out of your pocket. But it was a steel van, so the only damage that I had was where the, the headlight was. I lost part of the um the the cut the, 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 the plate to go over the you know the over the thing. Oh okay over the light and a little bit of a dent in the front bumper. The car got more damage than mine than mine did because mine was stolen steel. 
Yeah, well, when you make a freaking ve- when you drive a vehicle from the eighties, yeah, you hit a car from the two thousands, and it pretty much disintegrates. Yeah. yeah. Bye, guys. No, I got I got clocked coming around the corner at uh, seventy two. What was the zone speed limit? Fifty five. Yeah, remember, I was also braking before the turn, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you're probably doing like 85, 90. The corner. Oh, my gosh, Tiny Titans. I come around the corner, and there's a California Highway Patrol sitting right there. I was like, yeah. Lights, yep, the lights came on. I know who that's for. Oh, I, got, <laughs> I pulled over in front of them. Oh, I missed two of them one time. I'm coming back from Denver. Or, sorry, I'm going, I'm coming, when, when I lived in Denver, I was down here for, uh, holiday or something and i'll haul an ass back up one of the times i made it from castle rock to thornton where i lived in about 15 minutes i was doing about 95 to 100 state trooper on the side of the highway on the other side straight missed me because by the as i was going by there was a semi truck and i parked right behind it two rear semi wheels and that guy never even registered me Another time, I was driving back in the snow during the winter time, and state tr- state trooper coming down south as I'm going north, doing about 85, 90. He knew I was hauling out because I'm zooming by cars like they're standing. Clean. His dumbass decided to make a U-turn in the median. That's covered in about a foot and a half of snow. He didn't get out of that median. I've been blessed. I almost slept one time for a job interview. And I made it from Los Angeles to San Diego in an hour and 20 minutes. Nice. Leg, foot, Molly. For nothing. I just flew. Yeah, but what's nice is <laughs> the highway, since I pulled over in front of that highway patrol officer, he never got on the street. He just, you know, rolled up real slow. He only wrote me up for uh, 60. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah miles miles. more lenient than uh, on, doing 35 over way, the speed limit. Yeah, I was on my way to the Renaissance Fair. The car full of people. Yeah, that's a. Uh, he, he, you're lucky he didn't get you for reckless endangerment. There's this, um, where I live, there's um, Ocala and it joins up. Okay, so I'm in Tallahassee. So we have like Tennessee this way, then Ocala this way, which is roads. And then um, Monroe, um, Tharp, West Tharp. And so there's a strip, Ocala, that's got all college apartments and dorms and whatever. And um, two motorcycle cops like to hang up in between some of the buildings or some of the um, apartment complexes. And then um, down the road by the, the high school, when you get down to the light on the right, and a, a, a stady or a sheriff's office likes to hide over there. So we're coming down. This car, it's a two way down. This car is trying to pass me, and you, it's 35 in a residential. And so you have to be careful. I mean, you can go five or so over, but you know where the cops are hiding. So you kind of like bring it down a little bit. And so I, was, I wasn't going fast enough. You know, I wasn't going over and over. So I'm coming down and I'm coming up. The, the uh, most of the cops weren't there. They already got somebody. So they were pulled over. They pulled somebody over. We come up over the hill and down, and next thing you know, the the truck is like going by and trying to get in front of me so that he could take a left at the light. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and I, I like backed off and I'm like, go ahead, go get him because I knew it was coming, you know. And he goes up and gets up at the top of the hill, and then he takes the right at another light and pulls him all around like, sucker. <laughs> No, First of all, you're going 35 miles per hour down a residential road, and then on top of it, you're going by a high school where there's kids going to their practice across the field. Man, so you, you have... <laughs> now, I used to make it from Lancaster to Bishop in just under three hours. But I would yeah, do that. See, with... I, went, I went out of Tallahassee, Hearst. I hate it here, but anyway. No, but I would do that yeah. at like 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Then I knew there was only two highway patrol officers then. I'm just, I just blows my mind. You, you know, yeah, you, sp- okay, you're speeding, you can go five, ten over, you bring it down because you know where the cops are, whatever. But just sit there and know that there's a high school at the other end of the road, 
you know, and to go flying like that because you want to catch a light before it turns green and uh, before it turns red. And they still go through the lights around here when it when the light turns red. You know, it's like, oh, I have a couple of seconds. It hasn't turned red yet. Oh. I'm just waiting for a nice collision because that interception, it happens all the time. People take a right on red when it says no right on red and cars are coming down. You see a collision. It's just so crazy. People have you got the license out of a Cracker Jack box around here. Or the old Sears and Roebuck catalog. I don't know. One of the two. But it's just it's just so crazy. I feel bad that you had to work down here in Tallahassee and Havana. <laughs> there's not much. Tallahassee, there's not much. I'm telling you, for a state capital, it stinks. Oh, how'd you handle the uh, rain and the thunderstorms uh, last week? On my side of town, we, we fared pretty well. On the other side of town, a lot of the lower areas got hit really bad. People had to be rescued from their mobile homes and stuff. Some people had the houses up high enough on um, brick and whatever, Beers. but you should you should have seen the um, all the cars up to the top of the windows were covered in water. So mm. those cars are bye byes. Yeah, we had 13 feet of water in uh, in um, Kirbyville. <laughs> oh wow! No, not 13 no. feet. They had 13 inches of rain, but mm -hmm. a lot of the areas, you know, they were they were covering up trucks. Big trucks. Oh wow! They were over the road, and they had to close the roads and everything else for like two days. All I know is I was lucky that we did our road because usually, well, the first ten years, my kids and I would be outside. I couldn't, I can't do it now because of my legs, but we'd be outside with um our brooms, our brooms and rakes or whatever. We'd go down the storm drain. The storm drain is like a little gully, and huh? so well, it's not really a gully, but it's a little. When they made it, it was stupid, and then there's a bunch of leaves that come and cover it, and it's the only storm drain in that area. All the water accumulates and reaches almost to my doorstep. Thank goodness I have a step up, so no one can come in. But we have to go out there and we have to unclog the drain because we're not part of the city. Hey, hey everybody. Paul. Hey, Des, how you doing? Good, huh? So yeah, we had to go out there and clean them. The water would be up to our tushy. And we're saving other people's cars so that they won't get their engine full of water. I like going to um, Tom Brown Park, Hurst. That's hey, my favorite place to go. Are you following that mouse again, Colin? No, I wasn't even touching anything. A, a, a window just opened up and bend me somewhere else. Ah. Hey, Cecilia, Blake, uh, everybody else, Kathy. Hi, uh, Jenny. Uh, Jenny's right there. Yep, I said hi, Jenny. And Marcus is here too. I don't, I don't uh, know what Cliff's up to, but hi, Cliff. Uh, I think he stepped away for a minute. I so, got what did I miss? I'm sorry, I just stopped here. Oh, Hurst and I were just talking about Tallahassee. He was talking about if I went to the Indian Mounds near Lake Jackson. I don't even know where they are actually, and I'm about. I'm about a 15 minute left that car ride to Lake Jackson. Okay. I've never been, so. Yeah, I've it's to um, the United States a lot. I've not, never been there. Yeah. And so, I like Tom Brown Park just because it's pretty. And Lake Ella. Lake Ella got flooded really bad. It's okay. I, it's, I haven't been east of the Mississippi yet, so. I've been to Coast Hold on, Coast. Yeah, a big Circle K on the right. You mean if you're coming from Havana into Tallahassee? If I'm going up North Monroe, Lake Jackson would be on the right side, so the K would be on the left side. I've never been to Florida, so I can't really tell you. What's Mac oh, going yeah. on about? Oh, oh Mac, 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 Mac is mad because he got his paws trimmed. We're talking about Indian Mounds at, um, up by Lake Jackson, which is like a five, uh, 15 minute car ride back roads. Avoid all the traffic. 
That was interesting. Yeah, there's several several YouTubers I like to uh, go and see in Florida. Des, you're one of them. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see you guys too. I mean, I'm right off of. I'm basically like two miles, if that, to I-10. Florida's too far, f and I ain't never. <laughs> I've already stated I ain't never setting foot again in Florida because it's too damn hot in the summertime. Well, I'm in the north. I'm in the north, so I'm not down the south. So, um, well, let's see. Doug, it gets hot. I'd rather be. I'd rather be up. I'd rather be like North Carolina. We'll see. Oh, I, want mountain, I want mountains and lakes, but then that makes me further away from Molly and Jason. <laughs> <laughs> not by oh, you're probably closer to him than I am. Yeah, I want to go to the same uh, time zone. Yeah, I'm gonna go to next year's competition in Florida. That happens in December. Where does that happen? Right on the border of Georgia and um, Florida, about ten miles from the coast. Oh, you definitely gonna okay, have so to. So you're out towards like Jacksonville that way. Hey, yeah. You'll be hanging out with Blake then. What yeah, if you that's get a about two hours for me. Well, it's roughly two and a half hours, depending on what road I take. Well, this last year uh, was the first year, and it was a really big turnout. So I think uh, he's going to do it again. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, through uh, Southern Position uh, Air Weapons Spa. Oh, it's an air rifle competition? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Blake was wondering what it was, so I was clarifying. Yeah. I'm assuming it might be. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, Ken Hicks, I think. I can't remember. That owns it. I would love to ha go you know, go hang out with I Travis Matt for a while. Uh, Blake says, let him know if you're going, because he'll go, too. There's Mandy. Yeah, because I, I really know. Because that's maybe be my closest one I can get to. Well, look, your hair's getting really long. That's hmm. cool. Really? I like your hair. Can you see my hair. I wasn't expecting the ginger to pop up. I'm just kidding. How you doing, man? You never expect the ginger to pop up. <laughs> that's our ginger partly, snap. Partly ginger. No, no, she's not snapping yet. She's got to go do this. She's blonde at the. She's like light rusty blonde at the moment. No I pun intended. Know, it's kind of gingery. <laughs> and then it's like pile. Blonde on the ends. It happens. You get oh, it's because the sun bleaches your hair. You got on my channel, and you don't have the Trapper J sign up. <gasps> Shame on you. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. <laughs> it's okay, Mandy. You're all right. No, don't worry about it. You don't have to worry now. about it. I'm heartbroken hey. now. Oh, Amanda, you're missing something. Oh, what am I missing now? You know what you're missing. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, know, I, know. I don't see it back there. It's not up there. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be a camping trip? I have no idea. Yes, uh, Cliff, to answer your question, that's uh, Trav is doing his full time on his uh, tattoos. I talk to him from time to time on Facebook. Happy now? Yes, thank you. Now, 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 Amanda's uh, now Amanda's correct. She's yeah. official. Oh, now you've all seen me in my work clothes too. <laughs> what have I got in my back? I, I still thank him a lot because he helped me transition from uh, from rodents to uh, forbearing. Who? Ah, uh, Trap J will always be my favorite. Oh, if you would have said transition from something else, I'd have been like, "Peace him out." Uh, <laughs> Right. That's all she wrote, folks. It's basically it's still it's still the same thing. You just need to learn the animal a little bit more. It's still easy. Oh. Hi, Jenny. Hey. hey. Mandy and Cliffy are saying hi. Hi. I mean, there's several big uh, characters. Hi. Hello. And Des is saying hi too. That's Jenny, my wife. Bacchus is here Hello, somewhere. He's not, he's not happy with this right now, Cliff. Oh, no, Hello, cool. Cecilia. Hello, Kathy. Claws trimmed. Okay. Yeah. He, he got mind. Jenny right down the chest. It looks like she has a heart incision. Oh, geez. 
Yeah, so we we couldn't you know withhold getting his claws trimmed any longer. Oh, so Mav's doing pricing, and he's learning. So basically, Mav and Trav work together doing tattooing, but Mav's learning tattooing. Well, that's. I hope Trav at least spends time with the kids. Uh, some time with his uh, some time with his son. I can't even English. I am freaking tired. I've been I think he's full time parenting. Ten o'clock. Cliff, I think he's a full time parent now. Travis. Yeah. Well, Travis is the one that was doing the tattooing. I understand it. Yeah, Trav is doing tats, and Mav is uh, doing pricing and learning. So, yeah, Mav, they're both doing the same thing. Yep. Well, that's good. I be, I get notifications of all his new tattoos all the time. He did a really nice one of an owl recently. Where's I still have him on Instagram. He just never posts on Instagram anymore. I get him stuff on Facebook. You get more uh, the media coverage, I guess media coverage or whatever on Facebook. Because where is that page? It's over there next to that other page. It's not here. I don't know what you're on about. Oh, I'm looking for uh, for spa right now. Hold on. Oh. I remember where he goes. Um, I remember the the channel's name off the top of my head. I can't remember. Oh shoot! It is. Um... <coughs> Don't worry, I'm not dying. I'm just, I'm just wiped out, exhausted. I've been like working nonstop for like the last oh. week. Oh yeah, and you got a lot more going on too with all oh, those uh, concerts. You? Oh, I've got as of Friday. I won't have. Well, I mean, I'll probably still get off at my normal time, depending on how bad it is. But I may or may not be at work till six o'clock each day, and that's gonna suck butt. But it's great for my paycheck. Yeah, it's really good for the paycheck. And I already know I'm gonna have this oh, this next paycheck. I already know I have overtime on it. The boss is probably gonna be mad as hell. But it's like you know what? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is what it can't, is. Can't help it. Yeah. You want me to work a double on a Monday when we have a concert? And that dude, I didn't. I left work on Monday at eleven o'clock. At night? Yes. Wow. But 13 you know, you and think, a half hour shift. Almost 14 yeah, hours. You say. Usually you get there like 10 or 11 o'clock. Yeah, I usually, I get at work at, taking them supposed to be there at 9.30. I usually get there about 9.45. Because that's right. And then we close yeah, yeah. at 9, sometimes 8, depending on how slow it is. But because I had a concert, I had to stay open until 9. Wow. And that was a late running concert, so I didn't get out until... 10.45, I think, is when I finally ran out of stuff to sell. And then I closed down. By the time I left, it was about 11, 11.15. Went and ate. Got home. Literally got home at 1 o'clock. Wow. All I did was walk around my plant, see if anything was dead. And, yeah, I went, popped inside. And I think I passed out after, like, two hours. I think I went to bed at, like, 3 in the morning. Still had to go back up next morning to get to work. Ouch. Yeah. I remember days like that. I used to do 12 on 12 off for like a month straight just to get extra days off for holidays. Mm. It was great because we got holiday pay, but damn, that sucked working 12 on 12 off for like four weeks straight. No, oh, I bet. I was run. I would run that entire month when, I, when we did that. I think I would run an average of about five hours of sleep every day. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I, I do that half the time now. I, I'm a, I'm awake eighteen hours a day, sometimes more. I used to be able to do that. I've been doing it for the last ten years. I'm used to it. Like it done. It doesn't even phase me. Half the time I wake up before my alarm clock goes off, I roll over and I look at it. I'm like, oh, man, I got 15 minutes. And I'm just like wide awake after that because I know yeah, my no. alarm clock's going to go off, which really sucks. I My neighbor's uh, truck being started is my alarm clock. <laughs> Why? Has he got an F-250? No, he's got a Chevy something or other. 
the, the Chevy equivalent. So it's that would really be loud. probably the Tahoe. It, no, look, Tahoe basically, it looks just like mine, except that it's a Chevy. <laughs> But it's actually louder than my truck. My, lap, my truck's quiet in comparison. I don't even want to talk about double shifts. I used to work four jobs. By the way, these don't taste as pepperoni as pepperoni taste. Uh, what's it taste like then? Oh, kind of like sad poor man's pepperoni. Six months oh. ago. Hey, Deb. Glad you could make it. Oh, I got to turn the camera off. The kids are coming down. Oh, what, they're afraid to be seen on camera? Yep. They don't like being seen on camera. Well, then they should probably stay inside because um, everywhere they go, they're on camera. Yep. <laughs> I know. And they know. They just don't want to be in ca on camera in my house unless they feel like they're in the least before it. <laughs> Only a few know what coffee mama, which is my daughter, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that might taste like pepperoni. Maybe it's just the amount of spices in each one. Nah, just sometimes random bites. It just depends on it. I still can't find the dang freaking Texas barbecue one. They still haven't had it. <coughs> the pepperoni was a new flavor. <coughs> they didn't have that one last time. <coughs> Man, I'm dying over here. Shit. Oh, no. <laughs> don't, don't be doing that. <gasps> That's a lot of paperwork. Nah. All right. Don't bury me in the yard. Can you imagine you're trying to have to call 911 from, from Iowa to, to Albuquerque? <laughs> it wouldn't be the be, first time sad. somebody's actually done that from, like, out of state. Give me a moment. That's happened before. People have, friends have saved friends' lives because dude was having a heart, like, I think it was a, dude was having a heart attack or something, and his buddy, like, Two three states over called nine one one, told dispatch, "Hey, I need nine one one in this state," and they sent in nine one one. And dude got a hold of nine one one in that state, said, "Yeah, my buddy at this address is having a heart attack. You need to send out a unit." And yeah, it, it's it's not the first incident where somebody's had to call out of state for uh, to save somebody's butt. Oh, I bet. I gotta wait for Jason to come back to uh, let him know what happened to the uh, Jiffy train. That, that thing failed. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'm here. So well, all I the like stuff in the Jiffy tray completely failed. The only thing that so far somehow survived was that stupid cherry pepper. Yeah. And it was it was short and stunted, but it had a good ro uh, root system on the bottom when I pulled it That's out. Good. Same with the uh, three surviving uh, mammoths. So I got the three mammoths. I planted them in another planter. Uh, where I was, the, the one I had previously weeks before, a couple weeks before peed in. Um, I have one in the center that I moved into the center because it was the only one that actually sprouted. So I put the three around it in sort of like a really wide triangle. And I put the chili, the, sorry, cherry pepper, and I planted that one in between my onions and my carrot testing that I'm doing with the um, egg trays which I did not film I'm sorry folks I have just been in work mode and I am just too focused to film anything sorry there you go Blake click onto that it'll take you over to uh, southern position air weapons and uh, their, their YouTube channel I just saw spot air guns I'm just like hmm yeah, like your, your air gun gets to relax in a hot and a nice warm oil bath. Yeah, and a little salts. Yep. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's he's there's a shop there uh, not too far from where Blake is, and they actually have a competition there. They're going to be doing that uh, this upcoming December. Last year was our first year, and it was a good turnout. Nice. Yeah, so there's going to be four major competitions here in the U.S. now. Are you going to be ready for the competition is the question. Uh, i got to find out what's going to be available. Uh, for, uh, there's, there's no, there's no know, way I can see that. A lot of people yard. compete, uh, you know, who compete on that kind of level. They actually practice, like, every day. Yeah, I know. I, like I said, I, 
I might go ahead and start practicing for the um, 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 what is it called? The uh, hey, quiet. The um, hey, hey, running my 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 thought. Um, field target. Yeah, because I mean, when I competed for the Iowa games, I didn't practice at all, but I still won. But I could have done better if I would have actually known what I was getting into and what it kind of practice it took to get to where I was, you know, needed yeah. to be. So yeah, because we figured it's uh, it's nine hours, it's nine hours to get there, but it's a lot better than you know driving to Arizona or Utah or, uh, or Iowa. I no Ohio. <laughs> Think Ohio would have been closer than Iowa. Not well, really. It's further. It's more east. More hours. Yeah, it's more several more hours. Same level, but further east. Yeah, see here, I just go down to the 10 and straight on over. Jason, when you go for the um the event in December, are you go are you driving across? To where? When you go to the the event over by Jacksonville. Uh, I will be driving because they will not be able to take my stuff on the airplane. Good, then maybe I can meet you up on I-10 near um, Harley Davidson and Dairy Queen as you're heading east on I-10. I'm sure Molly would like that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Because I'm not going out to the competition without her. I would love it. She would be oh, so mad. Okay, we'll meet before that. It's cool to see you guys again. Because I need somebody to film me while I'm shooting. <laughs> you need your camera woman. Yeah, so yeah, I need to get out there. I need to. I need to start practicing. And I only got one that'll work for that. It's older, but yet it's still good. There you go. Hmm. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> I ain't new one. On, I was thinking. Yeah, by the way, Blake, how's your greenhouse doing? How's your uh, How's your veggies doing? He hasn't been posting any photos. Hi, Grace. Hey, Grace. He sends them to me randomly. Just I'll, I'll get like a, in the middle of the day, I'll just get a picture I'll of them. Here's the greenhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Next, uh, next Red Shirt Friday, I will be doing another uh, video. My goodness, that stuff is going. My potatoes are finally starting to break ground. Nice. So what type of potatoes are you growing? Uh, just regular Idaho potatoes, the russets. Okay, red ones, not white ones. Oh no, uh, no. Yeah, I think no, it's not the russets. The uh, the gold ones, the Yukons. Uh, Yukons. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely hate the um, seeds, the supposed seed potato packs that they sent you the, that you get at the store. I'm sorry, I'm not paying six bucks for five freaking potatoes. For six Either bucks, way. I can go buy two pack, two five pound bags of potatoes. Yeah, you eat one and you plant the others. Do you eat like three or four and you plant the rest? But no, seriously, if you want your if you want seed potatoes to grow faster, stick them in the container next to an onion. Oh yeah, potato For and onion then would work. There's a chemical reaction between the two that tells that potato it says, "This is what we need to do right now. We're gonna do it." And I guarantee you, you put like one or two onions near a bag of potatoes, and within a week, you'll start seeing the ice just massive. Now, have you ever planted them, planted them close together? The onions and potatoes, or just the potatoes close together? No, the onions and potatoes. Uh, I have not. Huh. That's tempting there to find out what would happen. Well, it'd be an interesting one, but... Most likely what would happen is the bottom of the onion would strangle out the top portion of the potato. Yeah, it could be. Because your potatoes are tubers, they'll grow underground, but your onion grows on the top like three, four yeah. inches. Yeah. yeah. And then the roots kind of, they, they sit, they go down and they spread out, but they don't spread out wider than the width of the onion. They're like trees. It's, it's weird. Oh, I have never pulled out an onion where the roots were like four to five times wider than the onion itself. 
Michael. So say he wants to know what you're eating for dinner. Um, technically, I already I ate like three o'clock. I had uh, spicy chicken sandwich and some fries. Uh, now I'm just kind of snacking because it's already been like five hours since I ate. And I've been doing yard work since I got back. Like when I popped on here, which was about you know, what, five minutes before Cecilia got here, I had just walked inside. She's licking the dirt. Like I think I've been on here for what, like 30 minutes? Yeah, like I said, I was out there cleaning up underneath the um, uh, magnolia tree that I haven't cleaned up underneath it in about uh, 18 months. Oof. Yeah. So I'm out there watching for copperheads, uh, copperheads and cottonmouths. You had my skate. Yeah, I mean, I can sit here and do shots, but... Uh... Yeah, I only have one. I only had one Red Bull. Yeah, like I said, I, I had my Snake Charmer with me today. Scooter. No, my nineteen eleven. Ah, yes, the good old one nine one one. I X I I. I'm gonna get more coffee. I'll be right back. Okay. Chorizo and egg is a Spanish meal. <laughs> Ooh, chorizo and eggs, nice. I love chorizo. <laughs> Grace, the old broads gang, was here before the rest of us. So that was what? Deb, Cecilia, and Grace, and Dez, and Molly, and. Old, old folks, the ones that are sitting there all walking on three legs. Just kidding, I'm just messing with you. You uh, Grace uh, uh, Nope, there's smack us a cack us a crack us a whack us a mack us. Oh he does not he is not happy. <laughs> He's like, let me go. Magus. There he goes. He just wanted to be high. Hey, what up, obstacle? How's it going? Hey obstacle. Hey obstacle. Hey, obstacle. obstacle. Hey. My cat doesn't like being picked up. <laughs> I don't so, know, he's, he's angry because he got his uh, scratchers trimmed. Oh, yeah. He would have sc scratched the heck out of my leg if he didn't have his like, his claws trimmed. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Hey, hey Cliff? Oh, I uh, saw the comment. I'm not blind. I'm blind. No, you're blonde. About well, that too. That's currently <laughs> at the moment. Temporarily. I've been on here 30 minutes and I'm damn near halfway through this thing. I'm like, this no, down I'm home. gonna leave my hair the way Get it is. Back. Oh god, Jason's back. Jason's not here. Yeah, by the way, I didn't see the armadillo last night. No. Oh, you look for it though? Huh? You did you look for him? Oh, I've been looking for him. Is there one or just more than one? As far as I know, just one. One can do a lot of damage. Now, how deep do they dig? Like four or five feet deep. Oh, wow. Yeah. I actually heard somebody using a Datsun to go after armadillos. Yeah. Don't fit in the hole. I'm not, I'm not getting a Datsun. Borrow <laughs> That's a chasing armadillo. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I see him, and if I catch him, yeah. Me. I'll get him then. Two. Yeah, I was watching an episode of uh, Homestead Rescue, and they were <laughs> digging out, and they the pond drained because there was a armadillo den underneath where they put the pond. Yeah. I don't know. They're they're probably just as bad as uh, nutria or um, moles. No, not the moles. The um, uh, muskrat, muskrat. Uh, the swamp rats there in uh, Iowa. Muskrat, muskrat. That's it. Or are you talking about gro groundhogs? Uh, no, muskrats. Muskrats don't do as much damage as groundhogs do. No, Ooh. on levees they do. <laughs> Not as much as you think. We do have some beaver here, though. Oh, beaver are bad about that. 
Oh yeah. But I people see. are really intent on blowing those things up. The dams, I mean. Oh, they're, they're fun to watch, especially when Trapper J blows blows them up. He used a uh, five gallon bucket, and yeah, it, it was a spectacle. Five gallon bucket of what? Tannerite. Right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I knew what you were going to say. It was yeah, they're always about, right. They're about, uh, what, 300 yards away or maybe a little bit closer, and they still got rained on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a five-gallon bucket of Tannerite. You're going to you're gonna hear and see that explosion. Oh, yeah. Good oh, no, you're going to feel that explosion. Oh, yeah, it, it was spectacular. He probably scared the sh bejesus out of them beavers. Oh, yeah. If not yeah. obliterated them. Oh, you should have seen the water going down uh, down the creek. <laughs> I mean, in major butt. A good 10-foot hole in there. It just drained. Maybe I had to get Russell to do that. Just put a like three-gallon bucket of tanner right where his beaver dam's at and watch the beavers be all pissed off. Because he, he's got the same problem in his area. Or he's yes. he's dug out the he's trenched out the beaver dam, and they had that sucker fixed by the next day. Oh yeah, yeah. Usually they, like, they trap the beaver first, and then they. Damn, they were efficient. Oh yeah, it was a busy beaver. Can't spell. Uh, Lori said she sent her husband's ashes off with two pounds of tannerite. <laughs> was he that bad? No. <laughs> That means he was literally obliterated to smithereens. Oh, yeah, literally. Hello, Colby. Hey, Colby, how you doing? Hey, Colby. Hey, Colby. Uh, I haven't seen Colby in a while. And, 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 we haven't seen Wyatt in ages either. No, I haven't seen Wyatt forever either. Yeah, I think Wyatt got mad at me when I told him I didn't want him, like, because of underage thingies on my channel and what I do on my channel. And yeah, I had, after that, I didn't really see him much. He hasn't showed up on mine either. No. Nope. I think he's upset with you, Colin, because you still haven't done that giveaway. <laughs> yeah. He was very adamant about that giveaway, you know, and he was very upset because he couldn't be included in the other one and he just did not understand well, why. It's, well, we explained why. Speaking of reasons, if you don't like it, doors that way. I got more stuff for giveaways. Send oh, do you? Uh, give backs, yes. I ain't doing giveaways because, you know, I've got nothing to give away. It's too expensive to ship it. Give me life away if you really want. Giveaway yeah, free picks. This will be probably for the lower 48. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that means I'm not included. <laughs> How could you not include me? Because you're I'm heartbroken. You don't include me. See the tears coming down. I figured I could show some of the stuff off. Well, we can't send you guys the stuff we want to, Amanda, because your yeah. customs suck butt. Yeah, I know. It well, does not phase me if I can or cannot be included in a gift. I can be included in that. John Deere's fine. There's the one there. A, a new work hat. Mine's sweaty as. Yeah. There's that one. You what's the? Oh, I like that one. Yeah, can I just buy that here. off you? With a with a leather patch on it. Yeah, can I just buy it off you? <laughs> uh, being what, serious. That one. I'm and I got being a Ford. Serious. For anybody straight so path with a Ford. Yeah, no. Ford I didn't have. I could. They didn't have Chevy or Dodge. No <sighs> Chevy man. And then there's this one here. The little leopard. Stay cute. I had to get something for the ladies too. Yeah, but I ain't included, man. Felt cute, might delete later. <laughs> so and, I got, wearing that hat. and then I got two of these. Oh, come on now. You got to let me buy one of them. <laughs> like, seriously, if I can't be included, I've got to be able to buy one. Come on, Jason. Let me buy I'll one. Have, I'll have it before the day's out. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Molly, Molly will uh, get in it. I'm going to go, what happened to that hat, honey? Hats. You see me rock off on a strip wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Molly's got the right answer. What hat? <laughs> and we show up on, on uh, Mandy's Molly head. Molly loves me. Alive. Love so, you, Molly. Let me guess. That one? Yes, please. Yes. 
Well, yeah, Cecilia, because shipping to Hawaii sucks. It's ridiculously Molly expensive. Molly loves me. Same with Alaska. Well, Same I got Australia. these from work, and I couldn't pass up the deal. Although, so. to be honest, I don't think we have a lot of Alaskan viewers in here. Not one, two like Australians. Australians. We used to have more Australians, but... Um, I scared him away. I'm sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yes, Cecilia, it's going to be the lower 48, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Well, how is um, Thingy Mip Bob doing? What's his name? Um, shady. Oh, no, that's not it. Steve Irwin? No. He was killed by a stingray. He was. No, the dude that he always used to come on and he jumped up and he took us on one of those. Um, yeah. Passed away in August. What? Passed away he in August. passed away last year. <clears throat> so what happened to him? Heart attack, I think. No, hold up. We From Sweeney I... Creek Farms. Yes. 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 He passed away in August of last year. Yes. That's why we haven't seen him. We can't Where solve the it anymore. Hell have I been? Busy. Busy. What are you freaking serious? I'm dead. Yep. I am dead. Yep. I'm as serious as a heart attack. Yes, bro. The 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 dude. What? Are you just now finding out? Yeah. Yes. You you're not uh, subscribed to Sweeney Creek Farms? No, oh, YouTube keeps taking away all my freaking subscriptions. Sweeney. Nice. You know what it is? Creek. Yeah, I know damn well what that is. Farms. Oh. That's a, a $120 reel. That's what that is. What was it again? Cast King. Open what kind reel. of reel was it, though? What type of reel? Bait caster. Uh, bait caster. Okay, what exactly is a bait caster? This one right here. Bait oh, I can't use this. I've tried like hell, and I can never get those to work. Oh, they, left, they, they come left-handed. <laughs> one more. Unfortunately, this was right-handed. Well, that won't do me any good. That's why. I, that's why I can't use it. <laughs> no, see now, it doesn't bother oh, me. Shit. Left or right-handed, I can do fish either way. Either way, we. I'm left-handed. I'll stick there's, with that. There's just something I just can't do. I'm I'm right-handed, but I can't use a real right-handed. If that makes any sense. No, that can't be the hey, same Bella. dude. That's not him, is Person? it? Yes. Yes. Hey, Bella, how's it going? He had two channels, Person? didn't he? It is him. Yeah, he had uh, uh, the Sweeney's Farm, and then he had his other one. Bomber Steve. Bomber Steve. Bomber Steve. That's why we used to summon him that way. We, no. we tried summoning him one day, and then we got notified that he... Was it going to be maybe? Yeah, Julie. Uh, yeah, Julianne didn't post that until what, like, like January, February, January? somewhere around there. She uh, posted the uh, video about his um, passing and the reason why they've been absent from YouTube for God, it was like five well, months. Yeah. No. And and like so she still hasn't said how or why. Nope. I'm not done. And you know what? The thing is, nobody's asking either. And I've, I've like all the videos she posted. I've gone through every comment. Not a single person has asked the reason why. Because all we have respect. Is giving out the support because we all respected that channel. We respect Julianne. We respected Bomber Steve. Yes. If she wants to make public the reason why he um, fed the she worms, do she'll do it on her own time. Yes, yeah, she will do it on her time. Yep. That's I just hope it wasn't man. the danger noodles. That's all I hope. And then, I seriously didn't know. Yeah, that it's been seven months now. And then I got a couple of months? these. Yeah, what are those? Been... Jason, if you're gonna show stuff off, make yourself big, you wiener. Oh. He didn't. Grace said that Mrs. Bomber Steve didn't make his death public till about three or four months ago. Yep, that yes. would have been about January. Yep. This whole like, time, like I didn't even freaking know, man. He was one of my favorite teachers. Yeah, when I first saw it, I'm going, no, there's some, something's wrong. And I was watching it, and it was like my heart just sank. I was just like, really? Yeah, I, well, cried that that video, I was 
I was a little distraught. Ooh, Ooh that's a nice watch. That's shiny. Oh, shoot. Oh, what kind is no, that? It's upside down. <laughs> oh, Daisy, 130 <laughs> years. It's upside down. No, it's it's right side up. It was upside down, but it was. Mm -hmm. uh, she's watching your YouTube side, not, not the stream yard. <laughs> Dad, you got to pay attention to the YouTube side. Just pop out, or sorry, the stream yard side and just pop out the YouTube chat. And then put it yeah, on the side. I no, know. I just like having you. I just like seeing you guys double. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll probably have a couple of uh, air gun stuff, but it won't be the air guns. It'll be the, like like an accessory or something. Maybe some uh, some shirts or something like that. But I'm not going to do, uh, you know, no scopes, no bipods, or nothing like that. I'm going to do uh, um, merch or something. You know, maybe I can get a couple of shirts from like Pyramid Air or even uh, um, uh, Air Guns of Arizona. I'll, I'll probably talk to Kip and see if I can get something through him. Or what about some more Pest Hunter merch? Uh, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> Usually, when it comes to the, the like merch, the first thing people do, like I, I hate it, it's so sad. But it's funny, but that's everybody. Everybody's go-to is they do their their logo, and the first thing they do is mugs or T-shirts. I just stick stickers. Stickers. I yeah, mean, stickers. it's least expensive. It's yeah. no surprisingly, if you get a certain amount of mugs, you can actually get them like dirt cheap. What's that yeah. one channel that the, the what um what channel um site that does really cheap mugs and T-shirts? Um, yeah, yeah. some lures and some uh, maybe some gardening books, stuff like I know, that. You know, I know Teesprings books. does dirt cheap T-shirts. If you buy like four or five hundred of them, you can get them for like pennies on the dollar. Yeah, but I don't have that. You know, six seven hundred dollars to fork out for all right. that. Right. Uh, 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 coffee think, mugs. No, uh, you're probably looking. thinking sticker mule for stickers. And I believe Sticker Mule also does mugs if you uh, I get mine from um, Devil Dog's Jamie. Keeper. My mugs yeah, and, Jamie. Uh, yeah, that's where I got mine. Yeah, I get my stuff from Devil Dog. Uh, I get ours from Jamie. She's actually had a sale this past weekend. $80, 200 stickers and a three a three inches. And you got a 15, um, 15 ounce free mug. So uh, I ordered myself some more stickers and I'm getting the mug for free. I still got to actually just add on my channel logo. I have been so lazy about it over the last four years. Yeah, well, well anyways, whenever I see something, uh, you know, somewhere I, I, I can pick it up. You know, it's, uh, that's not going to hurt me financially. I, I'll grab like one or two of them. So I'll probably grab a couple more lures. Um, I don't know. You know, something that's going to be easy. <coughs> all cost a whole lot. Because <coughs> this that's will be a whole part. lot to ship out, so. Can you break it up so it's like instead of one big prize to like two or three littler prizes? Well, I was going to do uh, each hat and I was going to do a, a lure, each one of the two watches that I have. Uh, all separate. Yeah, all separate. Yeah. This is a, so, every, so a lot of people can at least have a better chance of getting something. Oh, well, that's that's cool. do, if you if you're giving away if you have two watches and you're giving away two watches, why don't you do two big giveaways and then a bunch of little ones? So do a hat do for the two giveaways. I'd say do a hat, a lure, and the watch. And then a you bundle. do that. if you have two of those, you do that twice, and then whatever else you have left for like yeah. the other hats. You and, just do and, hat I got, and I got that you know, you know the the, the number one is going to be that reel. Sorry. Okay. There you go. So you do a hat, a lure, the reel, and the watch. That's the main big giveaway. Second prize, you get the hat, a lure, and the other watch. Mm -hmm. And then for the other ones, if you have any hats left, you do like two or three just little giveaways for the hats. And if you have any extra lures, do a hat and a lure. I'll get over yourself and you leave my fucking smoke yeah. voice. Damn! Wow. Aussie's getting frisky. <laughs> there we go. Language control. I don't know. I was kind of interesting. <laughs> she just got kind of I, just like the, I like the way she cusses. That's about it. I uh, know. Yeah, that, 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 that's like my daughter when she went from English to Spanish. It was funny. 
and we did it on purpose. <laughs> That's the sad part. The Des is laughing because she knows. <laughs> Jason, I got a question for you. I'm not sure if yes. I asked you this one. Do you have any recommended recommendations for a telescopic backpacking fishing rod? The rod itself. I can get reels, just the rod. <laughs> those, I'm just gonna feel you on that one. I don't. I've, tr I've tried those things. I'm still pissed that I left mine at the damn camp, and I think Jason ended up with it on the way back. You think so? Yeah. I'm, do you have two or three of them still? Oh yeah, I still got several. Yeah, I think I left mine there, oh, and I never put oh. it in my truck. Oh, what was it? I'm so mad. <laughs> Both pen fishing rods that he had. That you just all you gotta do is buy like the little micro reel for it. Yeah, I've like, seen those, but I just I no. Yeah, you, you know what you do? Those reels that come with it, you throw them awesome. in the you, you, and, and just go buy a little itty bitty one, a little bit better, uh, a lot better quality one. But you know, Monster this is, Mike's fishing from Florida, he made one out of a, a lighter. I mean, that's you know, that's a three foot rod. Now, now, what's the rating on that? About and three pound line. <laughs> no, I mean, if you catch a like a giant bass, this thing's gonna snap. No, you're not gonna. Well, actually, you'd be surprised if you have your drag set just right with six pound test, you can catch a big fish. I've seen some dudes catch some big fish on some small line. Yeah, especially on Berkeley line. You just you what the main thing you do is you don't want to jerk that thing back like you're trying to rip that sucker out the water and fling him forty feet into the shore. Yeah, you're not using uh, braided line to catch a uh, you know a twelve pound bass. You're not going to do that. This is for little creek fishing, little pond fishing, uh, little spots that are really hard to get to because you got so much brush that you can't overcast. You got to cast. Night obstacle. Sorry. Good night obstacle. Not going to bed yet. He is. He said one more beer and then he's going to bed. Uh, one more beer. He said, oh, he says work night and all. That's all right. He's got the he's got the goodbyes early, so that way he can just poop yeah. when he's ready. I don't know. I I just might order a couple more of these. These, these are inexpensive enough. Do those come with the reels or not? Yes, they do come with the reel. Yes, they're like, like a pad test. You put your own line on. Oh, okay. Like, 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 like I said. You take the reel that comes with it, and you and you just toss it. <laughs> just like okay. the one size reel would fit that. Then. Oh, believe it or not, a lot of little spinning rods uh, reels will fit on here. Like what yeah. exactly? Some examples. Uh, uh, there's a, a Daiwa makes one. I know. Um, what is that? Ugly Stick makes one. Shimano makes I'll one. Be, I'll be right back. You're thinking I'm gonna do a pit soak here. But yeah, there's a the bait you can they're micro reels is what they call them. You can find them there. Walmart usually sells them. I'm ch I'm checking um, eBay. <laughs> um. <laughs> no worries, Des. <laughs> She's not taking her good night back. No, only because I have to go to the cottage and I get up at six and I'm out the door at seven, and I have a full day tomorrow and then I'm off until Monday. Yeah, obstacles takes him. He'll take him either way. <laughs> hey, obstacle! Quick question on the ever on the off chance I'm ever popped up to popping up to Denver. You go. You want to do a meetup? Go hang out, go fishing, or do something up there? Because there's actually I got about a, I got a handful of people yeah. that I wouldn't mind just having a freaking just hanging out for a day. Just chilling up there for a while. Um, Denver kind of sucks, though, because of the uh, legalization of certain things. But uh, other than that, the population anyways, boom up there is ridiculous. <clears throat> this is a no-name reel. Okay. okay. It probably came from a combo from somewhere. I can't remember where I got it. But this is perfect size for it. Okay. And you can pick these up at, like, Walmart for... Anywhere between like, 15 and 25 bucks. Yeah, I'm going to say they're like 18 20 I was going to ask if it, fits, if it fits one of those kind of reels. Yeah. That's my, prefer, my preferable type fishing reel. Yeah. All right, night dab. Night dab. And again, night dab. I always switch it from the right to the left. Me too. <laughs> yep. See, here, 
I'm weird. I, I can cast right-handed, and I can reel left-handed, but I can also reel right-handed. So yeah. left or right doesn't make a damn difference to me. Well, I, well, well for, for me, it's casting with my right, and it's also holding on to the right with my power arm when I'm fishing, when I catch a fish. And then I use my you know non-dominant hand to reel. Well, when I cast, I have to be able to uh, my I'm more accurate casting with my right and reeling with my left, and just reverse that. You know, yeah, can't do it with my left. Yeah, I'm weird being partial ambidextrous. Like I have yeah. no casting. I can do it with a bow, but I can't do it with anything else, which is really weird. I can't cast for beans left-handed because I'm more right-hand dominant, but. It's weird. I'm right hand dominant, but I write left handed. So, like I said, partial ambidextrous. It's weird. Uh, he only uses a, a fly rod or a or string caster. Rod. Yeah. Open bail. Yeah. Let's see, I, I can I can do fly. I can do uh, spin, and I can also do uh, bait caster. Yeah, I've still never met. I've been trying to use my bait caster for years, and I've still never dialed that thing in, even yeah. with a test weight. I've tried everything, so I can't use them. I just stick with my spin caster. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, I learned on a bamboo rod. <laughs> hmm. I also so, think the main reason on my bait caster that I'm having issues is the fact that I'm using 12 pound spider wire. No, nah, shouldn't. You probably just need a. Uh, every time you change a, a lure, you have to adjust the, uh, the reel, the brakes. I was. I actually physically used a, an actual lure. Almost destroyed the lure testing it, but I was using a quarter ounce lure, which on a 12 pound line is kind of light. According to that, line, that's the I'm recommended back. weight for it. Yeah, if you're gonna be using so, a bait caster, what you do is you hold your rod at about a 45 degree angle, you push the button, and you let the, uh, the lure fall. When it hits the ground, you do not want that reel to continue spinning, you want it to stop. Yeah. So that's where you set your brake at, right about right when it hits the ground, it stops. Mine has three different braking systems if it, on if it. it. If it keeps spinning, it's too loose. Tighten it up. Mine Blake has says that it has a line he can use it. On it. Sounds like me obstacle on those bait casters. I can never get it to work. That uh, bait caster, practice. Jason, when I bought it, was $118. <laughs> that's nothing. Don't know, don't know why I bought it. But I bought it because I bought it. Just a cane. No, I, I think the the I will not buy a a bait caster under ninety nine dollars. I will not. Yeah, mine's uh mine's a Shimano bait caster. Yeah, uh, like I said, I've had too many issues with them after about a uh, a season, maybe a season and a half. The clutch plates are burnt out on them. Oh, mine doesn't. So that's why I pay for the higher. Quality ones, I got. I got a real. I got a couple reels here that are, but one of them is what, sixteen years old now. This is the Corrado. I still have no issues with it. I should have gone back to buy the, more of those Skeet Reese ones from uh, from the Bass Pro Shop, but they were out of them. Yeah. See, there's mine. Yeah. That thing has magnetic brake system. Yep. They all do. The secondary brake system, and then it actually has the these little peg thingies on this side, which is yeah, the that's for your clutch. Freaking clutch brake system. So it's it's a three braking system on that thing, and that sucker is. Wow. Mandy. Manda. You know, how you doing? <laughs> Muter. How many bearings is that one, Cliff? Uh, I believe this one is. Where's my button? And nothing less than seven bearings. I'm sorry, but like I said I just I bought a couple of those inexpensive reels. Uh, one of them, believe it or not, was a Abu Garcia, and I blew that out before the second season. Uh, don't know what actually. I have no idea what the bearing cast is on this one. It doesn't really say. How many bearings are on it? Yeah, it doesn't really say. I love the nine bearings. Oh. By the way, actually, I stand corrected. This has four different brake systems on it. You see them little tabs on the inside right there? Yep. You can set them little bastards, too. Yep. That's too complicated. That, that's part of the uh, mag brakes. Yeah, you're telling me. I've got to, I've basically got it set every other one is in. 
so I don't have too much brake system on this thing. And yeah, there's the uh, there's the mag brake right there. Uh, no, I'll stick with the spin casters. They're a lot easier. Five mag braking system on there, and that's too much. Yeah, no, the I'm dude. I'm telling you, when I bought this, this was years ago. I bought this thing. I bought this thing. Shit, hey, uh, Grace. There's nothing wrong with those Zepcos. There is not. I've had this actually since I lived in Denver, and I paid hundred and twenty dollars for this back in like twenty years ago. Yeah, those those Zepcos, once a year. You know, just just pull them pull them apart, oil them, and put them back together. They'll last <laughs> all year. Oh yeah. I mean, the clutch plates are are are, are simple on there. There's only five clutch plates on the on those. Well, this one here is that is that saltwater 808. I can't use it. It's just the wrong kind that I need. Yeah, because even the little cheapy ones that you get from those Zepcos, you know, those little combos, you know, you get get them for like twenty five, you know, thirty dollars, thirty five dollars. Those are fine. You, you'll you will still catch fish on those. You, I would change the line on them. Because <laughs> it's oh, just open, I, I love open bail. Camera, why are you being weird? I love open bail. I, I can work right, work a quarter ounce lure hell of far on the water. See, see, the you can almost all the way across the lake kind of thing, right? Yeah. Now the problem is I, I hate the drag on the front of the reels. I don't like them there. I like them uh, on the back. Okay. Does anybody ever use one of these? Yeah, that's a Zebco. No. Yeah, that's essentially the eight oh eights. Yeah, this is Zebco. I understand that. Have you ever used an eight oh eight? I got one. It, it, it's the same thing as all the rest of them. It's a it's a bigger freaking bail caster. Actually, there's this one's there's two different versions of this one. Actually, there's like six different versions. Well, this one here is the salt water. I need personally. I was looking for the actual bow fishing one, but this one can't be used for that. And what's nice is you can actually, you know, take the face of that off, and you know, you know, turn it into a big nut, and you can still use it if, if you ever crack it. If you ever crack the top of it, I haven't taken the lid, uh, uh, anything off. It's just the way it was when I took it out of the package. Yeah. Right, you know, it's brand new. Yeah, oh, never been like used. That. If you lose the cap, then you're kind of messed up. <laughs> oh, you, you need something to hold that uh, that reel in there. Cliff, what would you do with this thing? Well, it depends on what the application's for. But uh, if I had a reel for it, I would just use it as a regular fishing reel. Yeah, you got to winch for the front of your truck now. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably be used for that with the right. Uh, Back in the day, yes, I would have said I would have said 100%. I would have agreed with that because I used to put 50 pound test line, spider wire line on reels like that. You know how many times I have lost the lure stuck <laughs> at the bottom of something or other because I cannot break free with that 50 pound test line? Nope, you got to cut the line. It sucks because you lose that line. Oh, yeah. I pulled up one time, I pulled a tire out of the ground with that damn thing one time. Uh, Blake, it's because it, does, it won't accept the bow fishing line. No. It's too thick. So, this is great for saltwater fishing, but not for what I need it for. That's the only reason. But as like I said, I paid five bucks for it, so it's, I'm not out a lot of money or anything. I have, by the way, since, since I have grown up since i was you know early 20s i stopped doing 50 pound spider wire and things the max i'll go is about 15 pounds because dude you can still catch a 35 pound fish on 15 pound test spider wire oh yeah i'm yeah. sorry they say that the break strength on that is 20 uh, uh, no it is not that stuff is a lot stronger than you think it is oh it is well not only that the rod's also taking a lot of the uh, punishment for that too as well yeah, that's what it's designed to do. You're not good. Well, the thing is, you're not going to find a rod unless you're doing a surf rod that has a rating for 50 pound test spider oh. wire. Most Lays of the reels and rods you buy are anywhere between five to 15 pounds. Like I said, I've, I've caught many fish on that noodle rod. 
And everybody thinks what kind of fish are you catching for that noodle rock with that noodle rock? I was catching Perch. catfish. Which Perch, what? One fish. Catfish. Yeah. Oh, everybody thought I had a big old giant monster on there until they realized, oh, it's a noodle rod. Try doing it with a ice fishing rod. It's essentially what it is. Just yeah. a collapsible version. 30 pound braided? Yep. Spider dude, I'm telling you, spider wire is ridiculous. You know, oh, I'm yeah. not sure. I mean, you know, what you know what that even is. I've never even actually it's used like spider wire. So. It's like the equivalent to a uh, 60 pound mono. Oh yeah, braided line is in ridiculous. Here, here's the thing. So what I'm I have a whole bunch of 50 pound test line. What I use that for is I'll make like one foot long leader. Yes, obstacle. That is true. Braided is good for a lot of things. Biggest thing you want to catch with it is bass. You can catch musky on it. Yeah, you can catch catfish. You can do gar, but the problem is with gar is they'll actually snap that line. They'll, they'll, they'll bite through it. Yeah, they'll, they'll snap it. Yeah, I don't know how they snap braided line considering how flexible it is, but they do. That's why if you're hunting, or that's why when most fishermen do gar, they have that steel leader. I tell you what, the best thing I, I like about braided is when you're uh, fishing the, uh, the the grass or the weeds. A lot of times you'll cut through it. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, even if you get stuck on that, you just yank it. And that, like You don't even pull on the reel. You just reach over, get, oh, yeah. a hand, get a wrap or two on that line, and you just pull it. And Sorry. And Lots of fine calls. Yep. Notice. We heard it. Yeah. I agree with that obstacle. Yes, uh, the braided line will destroy your plastic liner rings unless you oh, have yeah. ceramic rings. You yeah, out but... this? Yeah, I got to I got to do a couple things before I crash in 15 minutes. All right. Good night. Take care. Good have night. Good, night. Good, good night, guys. Good night, guys. Amanda, good night, everybody. Uh, braided is stronger for certain applications. The only problem with braided is it has no give. It is it is stiff as cable. Oh yeah, especially with the uh, with the uh, one piece rod. Perfect. You, you feel everything. Yeah, mine's still mine's still sitting in the corner over here. Yep. Oh, mine I think right it still there. actually has the reel on it too. Yeah, the nice thing is when you're doing a drop shot, you can feel every little rock bouncing on the bottom of that water. Yeah, braided's good for a few things. If you're doing like river fishing, it's really nice because if you, depending on what lure you're using, it sits on top. The only drawback with braided is, or especially spider wire, is when it gets deeper in the water, it becomes more visible to fish. For yeah. some reason, the contrast pops. It's like sticking a bright orange marker in the sun on a road, but underwater for fish. So the the, the color spectrum changes on on yeah. that stuff really badly it's awesome for top water i was looking at the um bow fishing uh reels on uh, ebay and they have a 200 pound uh braided line yeah surf line yeah uh, i don't know how much uh if any regular reel would be able to handle that's a bottle reel by the way but yeah that, that's, that, that's a surf line reel Anybody who has braided line on their rods, such as the Shimano rods that you can send in and you have to repair it, have it sent back to you, remove the braided line because it avoids the warranty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I remember when mono uh, uh fishing line was like the, the king until braided line came out. When I was a kid. Depends on the mono line because they have variations of mono line. Some it'll have a little bit more stretch than others. You've got your, you've got your clear. You've got yellow. You've got red. I've seen Green. blue. You got, you got the mon, you got the monofilament, and you also have the uh, carbon fiber. The carbon fiber is pretty nice stuff too. Doesn't that damage your reel? No. No, the line won't damage your reel. What you got to worry about is the eyelets, like depending on what braid you're, or what line you run through it. It will. Um, 
So essentially what you end up doing is that that top eyelid at the end of your rod, you will destroy that depending on what line you're putting through there. Okay, uh, obstacle, if you can afford it, get the Orvis rods if you're going to be backpacking. I've been using my little Shakespeare. The five-piece eagle rod. Or sorry, the the five-piece eagle claw rod. That's actually pretty <clears throat> decent for backpacking fishing rod. Yeah. I know where to get one. Everybody knows where to get one. They sell them at Walmart for like twenty. No, no, no. The one I the, the one I found over at uh, over in town at Relics. The old Eagle Claw. Yeah, and yes, Grace Monofilament is more commonly known for. That's basically what every manufacturer puts on the on the reels, like pre reels. Yeah. Them is the monofilament. Problem with monofilament is the longer it stays on that spool, the, the memory. The, uh, the it, it will actually take that shape, which is why when you cast it, you see the little spiral coming out. So every they recommend every about two to three months, take your line, run it out, and just stretch it. Oh. I've yeah. got to head off. i got to start getting right. ready to go to work. No. All right, Andy. You have a good Hi, day at work. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Wear a hat. Yeah. Don't forget sunscreen. Yeah. And sunscreen. And a long yes. sleeve shirt and a hat. Okay. Yes, dads. Okay. <laughs> yes. Sounds like it sounds like a TV show. My three dads. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Can uh, you imagine? I'll talk to you later. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Take it that you'll be more like a like a uh, an uncle there, Cliff. Yeah. No, I'm actually still old enough to be your dad. How old is she? Thirty. Two, thirty-three, probably not, Cliff. More of an uncle. See, now, the problem with my bamboo rod, it was actually made before they had the artificial line because that was actually designed for silk. Now, getting silk string is that still possible? It is. I'm not paying for it. No, that's still well, no, I'm not paying for it. No. I'm not that big of a fly fisherman. That's your dad, your dad doesn't fish for for fun anymore, does he? No, he, his his vision is pretty much almost gone. Okay, yeah, unfortunately. And now, how many of the his reels, uh, bows on that rods that he's created is still in his possession? Probably about eighty, maybe a little bit more. Would he be willing to part with any of them? Probably over his dead body. <laughs> <laughs> waiting yeah all right so, wait, 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 wait. Time too. where does he live and how far and how long would it take to get from his house to jason's house where we can hide the evidence <laughs> i'm no. just saying no. No. <laughs> not that i would do it i can wait no, i've seen your your dad's rock uh, you know fishing poles they're just amazing oh he's an artist some of the stuff he made back in the 80s is still out there yeah, I mean, like I said, he's an artist of what he does. So that, that, I've not seen very many people do that. I yeah. still got to get you that that book I have. So <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, the obstacle that probably came with like eight or ten pound test at of the high end. Maybe about a hundred twenty oh, no, yards I have worth. It buried. I can't get to it right now. They, I swear. Real manufacturers, when they put line on there, they give you the cheapest line, and they only put like about a hundred yards of line on there. Like six pound tests or less. Yeah, it's anywhere between like. It depends on the rod. Like that you're three and on. like ten pound tests is what you're going to get max on most pre man uh, pre man prefab rods. Now, there's there's nothing wrong with four pound test or six pound test. It depends on what you're catching. You're not going to catch no freaking twenty pound bass on that, but. Oh yeah, you can. If you know what you're doing, yes. Yeah, it's not hard. If you don't know what you're doing, you just lost a twenty dollar lure in the mouth in the mouth of a bass. Yeah, because... yeah you, you're just SOL. Yeah. I watched the channel one time. This dude was fishing for bass, and he lost about a hundred and forty dollars worth of lures <laughs> in three casts. Hey, ouch. Some of those lures are expensive. Oh yeah, he was he was chucking out he was chucking like sixty dollar lures out there. 
Well, who the hell is throwing $60 lures on, like, 8-pound Tez trying to catch 5-pound bass? Yeah, like, that, that guy was just losing lines. Yeah, because I think mine's a three-weight on my Fluger. For, for, my, um, for my fly rod, for the bamboo. Yeah, I don't know what mine is. I actually had to strip mine. My, uh, my fly rod actually broke my rod one time. I was mad. Actually, no, but sorry, I didn't break the rod. The reel died. The um, the little springy, the little springy thing when you know when you reel it in, you hear that little click, 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 click when yeah. you reel it to keep it from uh, reversing on you if you have it on. The uh, tension spring snapped on that. Oh. Uh, so I had to go buy a, I had to go buy a brand new reel. I have the brand new reel it's just sitting outside in the shed on a on a broken rod, doing absolutely nothing. All right, obstacle. Have a good night. All right, take care, obstacle. Now he's out. He must have ran out of beer. Yep. <laughs> he said that was after his last beer. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking about having one tonight, and then I got full from dinner. I had to have the one because I'm like, it sucks. I gotta go buy. I gotta go buy more Red Bull then. Oh no. Yeah, it will probably won't be for a while, obstacle. But yeah, if I ever head on up there, I will uh, definitely let you know. Go hit up some of the lakes up there and go fishing. Hell, I got a fun one. We can go head up to Dillon, spend like a day or two up there, and just chill and go fishing up in Dillon. Oh, there you go. Assuming it's well, actually, no, Dillon might be harder. It might actually be cheaper to, or easier to go to Estes. Oh, I, I need to do a video of the of the creek, the aftermath. I need to get over there and do that. Oh, I get the floor. Good night. Well, guys, I'm, I'm going to be heading out. It's, it's almost 10 o'clock here, and I need to get yeah. some sleep. I'll probably go another 30 minutes. Thank you for your answering my questions, uh, guys. I really appreciate it on the right. fishing rods. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, is well. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Night, guys. Night. Good night. Practice doesn't always make perfect, but... Um, no, practice doesn't make it perfect. It makes you better. <laughs> makes you proficient. Proficient. There we go. How's your corn doing? Corn? Already? My, my, my hashtag corn porn? Yeah. The freaking wind blew one over. Ah! Uh, DOA? Not quite, but it's struggling. Oh. Must have messed up the uh, crown. Yeah, probably messed that up when I planted it, but then again, half the crown was out of the dirt when I planted it, so I kind of oh. buried it. Uh, I don't know. It's it's it. The spot where I want to plant everything is the like honestly the worst location for half my plants because it is so windy on that half of the yard because I have nothing blocking the wind. Nothing to protect it. Yeah. Nothing. The planters yeah. aren't high enough, and I don't have enough foliage that's six foot or plus to try to you know do a windbreak. So yeah. Uh, I've had no more targets. That's unfortunate. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh-oh. Molly said she lost her internet. Well, you're still going, so yeah. I haven't seen you freeze yet. No, not yet. Uh, both my tablet and my uh, and my uh, laptop is still going, so. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to hit that like button, folks. Oh, I hit the thumbs the down. It. I felt no, like I, I, for, forgot, I forgot to do it. There we but, go. Yeah, so... On the, uh, you know how I have the uh, the planter slash compost bin like area between the Jeep and the utility trailer? Yeah. So what I did on that one was, I think it was, I have that mesh cattle panel on there, the two by six or the two by yeah. four grid cattle panel that I have laying on top of it. I planted a piece of corn every other square or every other rectangle mm -hmm. um, from end to end. And then from back to front, I did every, I think, three or four squares, and then I planted a road, did the same thing all the way across. I've gotten my first five so far popped up. Oh, awesome. And I sort of cheated. I pre-hydrated my corn. Okay. Say that so again. I have these little clear dessert containers. 
Oh, yeah. I filled the dessert container about halfway up with water, and I just grabbed a handful of seeds and just chucked it in there. Oh, so you did a pre-germination. I, I pre-hydrated them. Otherwise, yes. it would have taken another, like, month for that stuff to hydrate enough to germinate. Really? The second batch that I had done, wind blew it over. I picked it up. It still had water in it. And then, like, a couple of days later, it was halfway in the backyard with the wood pile. It was, like, halfway back along this wall. <laughs> I looked at it. And like six of them had already, like six or eight of them had already started to grow little tails. I was like, damn it, if I would have seen this. So again, I stuck them in water and we'll see what they do. I'll see. I'll check them tomorrow, see what happens. Next but, time, use a mason jar with a lid. I wasn't expecting to have more oh, wind. Right now. Like I thought it was done and over with. But boy, I'll tell you, my limes and lemons right now are going full bore. Oh yeah, my uh, the uh, apple tree is uh, starting to leaf out really nice. Oh, dude, you oh man, you'd be mad if I showed you my apple tree. That sucker's got leaves and like two hundred flowers. Oh, I only got like maybe eight flowers, all on oh, one uh, one le uh, one limb. I was like, really? Well, I mean, Wait. mine are going. They're they're. I mean, they're. I guarantee you, those things will probably grow another two feet this year, which is gonna suck because I'm gonna have to chop it off at the end of the oh, season. Yeah. <laughs> now, if any of those uh, flowers can be viable, I'm just gonna pluck them off. I'm, I'm gonna let my tree. At this point, the one apple tree I had last year that produced, I'm just gonna let it go at this point because I figure if it produced apples, it should have a sufficient root stock. Yes. Otherwise, it wouldn't produce apples. Yeah, well, I'm, like I said, for its first year, I'm not going to let it uh, grow apples. I want it to go all to the tree. Because it's only been in, what, almost a year? When did I, I planted that, what? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Oh, I, I'll have to look at my videos to find out when I, when I planted them. <laughs> Do a test run. Uh, leave up to, like, two apples growing on it and see what happens. If they were viable, it was all all bunched together. I had like eight flowers bunched together. Oh yeah, you'll get that a lot on those trees, and then it depends on which uh, flower wants to be the fertilized one or the yeah. viable one. You may get like eight or ten in one little cluster, but you'll only get like one, maybe two apples off of it. Yeah, because depending on the apple variety, you may actually need another apple tree roughly within ten feet of it to cross pollinate. You gotta remember, I I only got the one apple tree. Uh, you might need a second apple tree. I, yeah, I'm gonna wait till the. Uh, you're uh, gonna have to get them next year because if your your location's probably already out of them. Yeah, I know that we. Uh, I missed out on that one. I, I didn't grab it that day, and I should have, and I didn't. Yeah, I went back. Um, my 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 uh, my all of my locations have been out of trees already for two weeks. Yeah, that just let it bloom. Ones. You'll probably only get one or two off of that regardless. Yeah. No, I believe this was the Anna that's the one that survived. Um, that really depends on the tree grace. Um, a fully established, fully mature fruit tree, you'll get about a 50 to 70% German uh, fruit rate on versus your flowers. So... Yeah. Your, your tree is going to look like a cherry blossom in full bloom, but you might only get 75% of the fruit-bearing um, stalks on it. And it really just depends on how established your tree is, how well it's been maintained, and what you're using, like how well your soil is. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I put the um, that um, compost around it, and all of a sudden it just went, dink, here I am. Oh, well... They certain it, it they'll wake up at a certain point in time and they'll just be like full yeah. on like hundred percent productivity. <clears throat> yeah, but like this upcoming uh, September, we'll probably put in an order for uh, several fruit trees for bare root and have them shipped. If I can get, well, it's not a matter of if I can get; it's more of a matter of when I decide to purchase it. 
I can get some uh, God, what the hell am I talking about? Some grafting uh, stuff for trees. I actually want to graft some root uh, root stalks onto some of the trees that I have because I have one apple tree. I have this really nice fat, like almost an inch branch coming off just one stalk side, one side of one big old branch. Mm -hmm. It is the perfect size and it has the perfect limb set off of the top of the ends of it. Really? For an actual separate tree. So I have to get something that I can, I can do that with a knife. Essentially I can de uh, debark it, but I have to get a container to put around it so I can, root stock that part and then i can cut it and have a secondary apple tree it i mean i'm telling you i'm not joking it is the perfect yeah something like that yeah you need to get a budding grafting knife it is the perfect internet size and dimension and it it has a little bit of a curve to it only because it's growing upwards but if i can graft it nice. or get some root stock on it i can straighten that we'll get the root stock under it'll straighten itself out sure. About forty bucks. I would have a second apple 40, tree. Fifty bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah, like I said, I got the the Victorinox uh, budding grafting knife, and I've had this one for eons. Yeah, I'm, I'll just I can just pick but, but up a wife. generic one at Walmart for like eight bucks. Yeah. This is um, BM before Molly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you've seen how much this has been sharpened. It's like I said, it's it's time. It's time for a replacement. I just don't want to spend the money for it right now. Eh, like I said, I mean, you got them at your work. They'll sell them in the garden section. Not the Victor Knox. No, not the Victor Knox. But um, you, I mean, you get the uh, what is it? Uh... I've had a knockoff blade before, and it it's not as good. I don't think Anvil makes one. I haven't seen one from Anvil, but the, those are like Anvil is the kind of like cheaper version, but they seem to do better than some of the name brand stuff, like the Fiskers. I, the Fiskers is the one that makes that stupid grafting knife. I, I hate Fiskers. Believe it or not, I really do. I don't uh, mind certain products from Fiskers. Uh, was it Fiskers? No, that's a Corona. Oh, we yeah. spend money for the Corona. <laughs> I think Fiskers. either way. I mean, I've never had an issue with the, uh, with either of them. Well, we could not get if if um, the Fiskers product to last more than four months at work. Could not. Wow. They would just they would come apart. They would break. I said I got Coronas that are that we bought back in ninety eight. Yes, I still have my my first Coronas I bought back in ninety eight. See, and then I, I have I have this thing that that one came in that dual pack that came with this and the yeah. and the pruning saw. I actually like this thing. That sucker is that it's a short blade, but it is aggressive. Oh, let me find out. Actually, that seems like it needs to be tightened I think already. Ducks budding and grafting knife. No, that's actually pretty tight on there. Yeah, no, no actually, good. they've come down in price, honey. On Amazon for twenty six forty three right now. That's actually a little loose. I did not. All my seeds. They come in purple now. Say what? The uh, the Victoria Knox comes in purple now. Ooh. Actually, Get a pink one. Send it to Molly. I mean, uh, send it to Amanda. It, it's it's a. Uh, well, I couldn't say I shouldn't say purple. It's like a um, mauve. Uh, it's a purple, but towards the um, uh, turquoise color. So not quite burgundy, but oh, they got green and they got blue. Nice. And like a sort of purple, and they got the original red. Oop! Apparently, Cecilia is going to bed. Good night, Cecilia. Good night, Cecilia. I do apologize yeah. if we missed this before you went. I was uh. Slightly distracted. Yes, we were. Jason will be probably calling it a night here shortly. Yeah, shortly. 
Yeah, but like I said, uh, the real good blades are, the, are, the, are going to be like these ones right here. <coughs> I can't here. see because somebody doesn't want to be on camera tonight. Yeah. Like I said, that one is really, really worn. I'm also on the uh, wrong window. Yeah. There's more of a notch here, and this actually flares out and comes back. Yeah, it's usually supposed to. It's kind of it's supposed to look like a hook bill. No, no, no. This one's not the hook bill. This one's more bulged out here. Then it comes back in. So then it's usually going to be straight. Yeah. So right here, then you got that little notch that's going to be like right in here. Like I said, that is worn. That is really worn out. Mm hmm. Tells you how long I've had this one. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I just looked it up like twenty six bucks and change. That ain't too bad. No, it's not bad. I paid I paid higher for that one. Yeah, I think uh, so. I think what I'll do, Jason, is tomorrow I will uh, take a picture of the uh, tree that I'm the the apple tree that I want to do the uh, root stock graft on, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, and you'll see why I want to do it with that particular branch. Now I'm surprised you don't just uh, find a uh, a root stock for it and graft it onto that. Um, I won't actually need to do a root. Uh, I have issue. I have um problems when it comes to uh, trying to graft certain things. Like I don't know why. I've done. I tried to do root starts on numerous plants before. And I've had the absolute worst luck. Because <coughs> usually when you uh, get the uh, a fruit tree, you get the best of the growing of that species to like the best root stock. That's why they graft them together. Yeah. Well, what I want to do is I just want it straight because, I mean, I've, I've seen people do it before. It's the same way most arborists do it. You just take a clipping, stick it in the dirt, and within, you know, you get a certain, add some random, I, I mean, I have rooting powder somewhere over here. Yeah, the root hormone, yeah. Yeah, the, I've got the garden style root hormone. I've got that right there. I need to get some. And, I mean, I've used it, and I've had the worst, like the absolute worst luck, grab, like, cloning plants uh i have a planter outside that i uh, tr uh hey, um a little trick to... back, cliff dip it in water first and then yeah. dip it into the uh powder yeah and then i've done that and then pencil and then put it in and pack it now to see the way i've seen people do it is they'll just dip it in there and just stick it right in the dirt no I'll, I'll pencil it first because it doesn't pull off the rooting hormone that could be why that could be my problem but like I said, I've got a planter. I've got one of the 16 or 18 inch uh, whiskey barrel planters out here, and I planted I think about 12 different uh, segments of yeah. um, rosemary, and I think I have two that survived. Yeah, you usually got to start those out in like a shade house. I started those things like a like two months ago. Uh -huh. Because uh, down here, rosemary is, like, our rosemary is ridiculously cold tolerant. Yeah, because I'm also going to do some cuttings here shortly with that uh, with that Lincoln Rose. And that one I'm going to film. Do you already have that on property, or did you actually figure out that, that wild I, one that's actually in Lincoln? That one that's out there? No, it's got some nice canes on it. Uh, it's been there for a while. <coughs> so you actually verified that that actually is the I, Lincoln I, Rose? I believe it is the Lincoln. I mean, geez, that thing is just armored with thorns. Yeah, you should. I'm gonna have to use that's ball. another thing. I, I got to take a picture of my rose bushes and show you the damn thorns on that sucker. That thing is brutal. I'd rather mess with the uh, raspberries than that rose bush right now. <sighs> <laughs> yes. Dude, that's a tough one. So if, yeah. if it came down to raspberries, rose bushes, or my orange tree. Orange tree. <laughs> oh hell no. Uh, uh no thank you. Oh oh you got the really thorny one? Oh dude. I've got the one that I've got the Ooh. thorns on there are like an inch long. That's gonna be the um I think it's a navel orange. It could be a navel. There's a certain uh species is navel. Because that's what was common there in Arizona. Yeah, I can run out. Like, I still have the tag on the tree. I don't take the tags off my trees uh, until the sun does. 
Yeah, I still got the tags on my trees. I'll run out real quick. Let me run out real quick, and I'll take a quick peek. But I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the navel orange. Yeah, I just need to get verified if that is a true Lincoln. But everything's pointing towards it. I said I have no idea how old that uh, rosebush is. But it's on the area. It's in the area where it gets a lot of air flowing through it, so I don't have to worry about it being always wet. Because roses don't like to be wet because they get the uh, snow mold on them. Or that snow mold, the uh, the powdery mildew. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's the naval orange US nine forty two. Okay. Is what the number is on there. But yeah, that that sucker's got like thorns on there about an inch long, man. Things are nasty. Oh yeah. I about damn near ran into it earlier today because the wind was kind of blowing it over, and I turned around. And I damn near got a needle right in the eye. Ah. I said that thing hit the top of my hat, and I said, "Oh, that was close." Get back! Get back! Get back! Because <laughs> even the top of that tree, the little the thorns on there are like a quarter inch. Oh yeah. They're little thorns. And they'll go through leather. Oh, dude, them, that thing will... Dude, it's just like... I have... So I had two oranges on that. But yeah. because of the wind and the slight chill, they fell off. Oh, bummer. I was sad. I was looking at it today, and I was like, oh, my oranges fell off. I was like, oh, that is so sad. Guaranteed next year, I'll have a buttload on it. Oh, that. yeah. You can, always, you can always also cover it <laughs> during bloom, too. Get them to pop. <laughs> Pull any more. Yeah, that one I was actually surprised. I never even got to see it butt out. I just was in the greenhouse, and the next thing I knew, it had fruit on it. I'm like, all right, well, oh, wow. shit. Totally missed it then. My other ones, because they're right next to the, like, each one was left and right of the doorway. I would open the door, and, you know, 400 flowers on each one. <laughs> oh, oh, and I found out somebody at work has bees. Ooh. And guess what? They're wild bees. Really? And he's got he's got them in a hive right now. He's gonna let me know if there's uh, when the next when his uh, split's gonna happen. Oh, heck yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so he'll, give, I, he'll give you a good split, or is he gonna so, give you the nukes? So, so I'm gonna run down. Uh, so next time I talk to him, let <coughs> me get his address. I'm gonna run down the street and. Uh, Put my beehive next to his. That's assuming does he live? Well, that's assuming he lives next to you. Oh no! Uh, like fifteen minutes, twenty minutes down the road. Oh shit! Yeah. So that's gonna be fun getting going there at four o'clock in the morning to go pick up a beehive <laughs> on my day off. Shit! If you're getting free bees. Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna leave them there. So once the split happens, I'm gonna leave the hive there for about a week. Let them get you know adjusted to that hive, and then I'll uh, get some uh, some shade cloth, cover it up, you know, bound it up at the bottom, carefully put it in the van, <laughs> transport, and transport it home. Well, in the dark, and get them set up uh, before the uh, first light. Um, if you're gonna do it, smoke them first. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. That way they're they're in there what they want uh, what they'll consider their dormancy or like sleep phase. Well, what it does is actually it sends a, uh, a message to the brain to uh, eat as much honey as possible because there's a forest fire coming. <laughs> it simulates that, and then they basically uh, just overweight with honey. In them. So technically, it kind of makes them, you know, fat and sassy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Now, and, you know, that, and that's one of their uh, the backups because they might have to leave the hive because of a fire. So you might got to eat as much as you can as quickly as possible so you have that uh, reserve to, uh, to survive for at least a couple of weeks. Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, if in a scenario like that, they will actually take larvae with them. I'm not sure about that. But, yeah, if, if they get a split, I'll, I'll be happy to t uh, take a split. I'm just hoping they are going to—they are going to be wild bees, and that'll give me a chance to. Uh, I need a—I need to get a uh, stand built for them. 
That won't take long. I mean, you get all kinds of free pallets from work anyway. That's what I was thinking. Just get the about uh, you know the two by two pallets. Yeah. And I'll just get like uh, six or seven of them and just screw them all down to each other, and just uh, level it out on uh, four bricks. We really just need like three or four. No, I need to get it up higher off the ground. Oh yeah, because that's right, because of flooding. Mm -hmm. I always forget about that. Yep. I need to get it at least three feet off the ground. Yeah, I need at least six <coughs> feet minimum. And then I'm gonna do that until I get a uh, a uh, a bead deck built. Okay. So I want to I want to build a uh, a bead deck that's gonna be uh, six feet by about uh, eight feet long. Then I can at least get uh, two hives on there. Oh, six by eight. You'll be able to get like eight hives on there. No, I'm just do two. I'm not going to do any more than that. And if they split on their own, they split. Um, you know, after that, I'm not going to be worried about. It. I at least I got them in the hive. I was going to say, if, well, once you get your second one, what I, I mean, I recommend, even though I personally don't have bees, so this is just kind of like based on knowledge. Get yourself a flow hive. That's what I was going to do. I just need to get that. You know, I First can go. Initial the, started. Yeah, I can run down the road. I can pick up a. Uh, a Langstrom uh, 10 for under 100 bucks with the uh, combs in them. Nice. And all I need is just that just that deep hive for their uh, main brood. And then I'll get a super. Put that on there because that's about the size that they're really looking for is, you know, uh, the 10 inch lamb strung and then a six inch lamb strung. And that's what they actually like. I've been watching a guy on, on YouTube and he figured out that's what they want is that size and then anything above that is going to be another super for them and then i'll have the flow hive on top of that for us yeah i kind of I, I want bees and i've actually gotten permission to potentially get bees yep. which is weird because the person that actually gave me the permission to get bees is the one that didn't want bees on the property in the first place yeah. which is hilarious oh yeah well until you saw the price of honey <clears throat> you know, oh, the is? funny thing is, I still have honey down here on the bottom of my shelf that I paid, I think I paid like eight or ten bucks for each one of those. Did you see self-sufficient me on how many, how much honey he got his first harvest? Oh, yeah, he, shit ton. 22 kilos. Yeah. That is 48 pounds. Yeah, but he's also got like six or eight beehives. No, I thought it was just the one. Unless he's got that thing stacked to like four or five so high. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, just... if, if he's got full full frames in there, even if, yeah, if he's got full frames at four high, yeah, he probably got yeah, he could he could probably do that about ten kilos out of each for out of each box. Oh yeah. I mean, just that's that's a lot of honey. Well, actually, no, you'd have to do it five high because you're gonna need the you need one brood box. So you need one frame, uh, one yeah, one box for the brood, and then the rest of it's all. Uh, well, that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a, a ten inch and a six inch. And that's gonna be all brood. That's theirs. Then I get another a six inch uh, super on top of that, which is gonna be their food. Because remember, I have we have a longer season here. Yeah. We don't want the overwinter as, as bad. And don't do <laughs> don't do the. What I've seen everybody do is they always do the sugar water mix. To make basically like a glue and they just leave it don't put a screen on uh, like a small filter screen on the top where the brood holds that to the top half yeah. and then just fill that whole entire top box of sugar yeah no just put in uh what's that that fondant or uh you know you use for cakes yeah yeah that's what the that's what they use to uh, feed the bees over winter they yeah you just throw that in there and they'll They'll crawl up there and they'll eat what they need and they'll be done. They have they'll have it all for winter. But I mean, oh, yeah. you and me have a short, mild winter anyway. So yeah, yeah. Like I said, we already have what we had uh, dandelions blooming as early as late February. I had bees in <coughs> January because my fruit tree, both all my yep. citrus trees were like, it's five a.m. Let's wake up and there was like eight thousand flowers on there. I'm like Jesus Christ. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Oh, hi, Dan. A bunt pen. B-U-N-D-T. 
no, no, it's it. No, it's the icing that you actually put on like the wedding cakes. You know that real sugary, thick, heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. That looks almost uh, feels like dough. Oh, you're mar like marzipan. I'm thinking marzipan. No, it's a fondant or something like that. Oh yeah, fondant. You okay? Fondant. Yeah. Okay, I have troubles trying to remember that darn word. Yeah, but yeah, uh, you, basically that's what you give them if if you need to. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and some of the colder box. climates, that's what they'll do is they'll that top box, which mm -hmm. is usually only about three four inches, and they'll put a little tab on the hole and the, the, for the bees to access it. And then they'll fill yeah. that entire box with sugar. Oh, autocorrect changed it. <laughs> Bundle pen. Yeah. And yeah. That's why I hate autocorrect and predictive text. Two worst yes. things to ever have on on your phone at the same time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, but you won't have the troubles like I have here. That's one of the reasons why I need to get a wild hive. So they can, uh, you know, fight off the Berla mite on their own. Oh man, I dude, we get wild hot. I mean, aside from the one that my neighbor had, and I really kind of wish at that time I would have had a box to stick them in, because I would have taken that whole hive. That was a huge ass hive. That was probably ten thousand plus bees. Oh, that's a good size hive. Oh, it was mad. The thing had been in her, in the in her decrepit house for like two years. Oh yeah, it was a huge ass hive. I think we actually still have honey in our freezer from that hive. Still in the comb, or oh yeah, straight in the comb. Yeah, you don't even need to have it in the freezer. You can just put it in a jar. It's good. You just stuck it in the freezer so it's nice and frozen. Yep. But yeah, I got my my neighbor had. <coughs> she basically yeah. the guy that took the beehive out. He does. He's a local bee. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the name name of the name of it, but yeah, he does local. He does a lot of bee recovery around this area. Yeah. So he he's a local dude. He's only like I think like 15, maybe 20 minutes away. So it's not yeah. too far. And yeah, his essentially payment was that he was allowed to keep a lot of the comb for yeah. the honey. Yeah, usually you want mean, to try to keep the comb with them as much. Three as days. Possible. Oh yeah, for three four days he came over here and he was sucking bees out of the damn house. Oh yeah. It's not easy to get rid of the, uh, a hive of bees. Oh, it's really you know, not. Once, once they're established, and you want to keep them alive, that's the whole thing. He had four big ass. I mean, big. I'm talking like twenty gallon totes. Yeah. He was doing it. He had a one of the totes. The way he had this thing designed, he had a shot vac that went to the tote, and then yep. he had the shot vac hose from the end of the totes that went all the way out. So you would turn one on and it would suck the bees in, and he had a filter screen on the top so it wouldn't suck the bees into the or like into yeah, the a, a larger surface area for the air to come through. Yeah, he was pulling to a screen and then killing them. Yeah. Yeah, big yeah. old filter on that thing. Essentially, you just use the shop back motor, just drill, uh, cut a hole in the top of the tote and stuck that thing in there. Yeah. And yeah, but he had it covered in cloth so that the bees weren't getting stuck directly into the filter. Yeah. Usually, if you leave a hive there, once you've got to move into the hive, uh, and, you, and you clean up everything where they were, and you plug up the hole, usually they they won't they'll come back to there. Yeah. The entrance. But however, if you keep the the hive close by, they eventually get to go. Oh, I smell uh, my queen. Let's go in there. Yeah, he he pretty much vacuumed out of what he could, and then he plugged the hole. Because it yeah. was like the the where they got in was it looked like an old drip line for either a water line or a cooler of some sort. A drain line. Yeah, a drain line of sorts that just came straight out the wall, and they went in there three four feet wide. That thing was about four feet high. Yeah, that, that's a big hive. It's a huge. I told you it was in there for like two maybe three years just chilling in there. <clears throat> yeah. Like, oh yeah. But I mean, we've got everywhere down here. A lot of these, a lot of the houses around here, they grow nothing but flowers. Oh yeah. So, astronomical oh, yeah. load of pollen free for the bees because everybody down here grows flowers. Speaking of flowers, one of the gladioluses is uh, got a pup. Nice. I was like, woohoo! If anybody's wondering, it's creating another little uh, bulb next to it. 
these are what I have planted out over there. These things, I think they're gladiolus. Not 100%. They've got the, it's weird. It's like this weird wide leaf that grows like this. Yeah. Like in a weird, it, straight line fan. And then sh I've got some that send out like a three foot stalk and each one of them stalks has like five flowers on it. Yeah. I got, I got one, I got two of them that are curled. <laughs> Ooh. Like 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 they're crested. Needs more water. Or it's, less water. It's in with the other ones. Hmm. How's the uh, black iris doing? Um, it's actually getting a little bit bigger. That's good. I'll be doing a video on Friday. Nice. So yeah, um, the berries are going to be turning red soon for the uh, asparagus. Ooh, ooh, time to be picking some berries. Yep, so as soon as they turn red and they're a little bit soft, I just need to keep the birds off of them. <sighs> yeah, the, the cardinals like them. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Just put like a go to the Home Depot and buy one of them like cheap fake owls and just stick it in the dirt. No, nah, I just probably need to get a cheesecloth and cover it. Yeah, out of sight, out of mind. There you go. Or, or. I think I have an old white bed sheet around here somewhere. I, just, I can just, you know, drape it over my uh, my stand for it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, and I got uh, my little. Apparently, I'm good at uh, growing asparagus. Are those doing really good this year? Already. Whew. I already got the flat, uh, you know, the blue or not the blooms, but all the little leaflets and everything else. I got several more that have popped up. I have almost 50% already nice. out of the 24. So I was like, yes, apparently I'm good at doing asparagus. So next year you're going to have a pretty dang good harvest on asparagus. Uh, I will not have a, a harvest for another probably three years. No, you planted them last year. Yeah, it's, it's three years. Yeah, so next year you should have a decent, a pretty good harvest. I can, I can harvest off my parent plant next year for sure. Yeah, which... That one, well, I think you only had what three or four of those. Yeah, um, actually, it, it shot up uh, about twelve shoots this year. So yeah, next year you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna have a decent harvest. Oh yeah. And then probably twenty five, twenty six will be the rest of them for that batch. Oh, I'm 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 gonna keep going, keep going, keep going, because eventually I'm gonna have to rotate. <laughs> might have to argue, like you might have to amend the soil, but I don't think we'll have to rotate. No, you just add more every year. About that yeah. much. Every year, and you just slowly bring up the soil. But no, what I'm saying is, eventually that plant's going to get old and it's going to die. Yeah, you know what? That's, a, that's an interesting question. But it takes what? 20 years, but yeah, as long as I keep... Because we eat a lot of asparagus here, so just having several plants is not going to be enough. <laughs> So I would probably have to have a good, you know, 60, 70 plants. 15 years mm -hmm. or more. Yes. For asparagus. Mm -hmm. That is a pretty and, good lifespan, man. That's. And if you transplant it, like I said, after it's established and you transplant it, you got to wait a couple more years. Yeah. I mean, you're, regardless, you have your minimum of three years before you can harvest on that. Yeah. And you only get... For the first year that you harvest, you can only get a get maybe Not four or five spears off of it. Yeah. You know, it, that's why asparagus is expensive. I mean, it, you just can't, you know, put it all at one time and say, oh, here we go. And the plant's going to die because it can't yeah. get the synthesis. So I just use that parent plant for seed only. For probably this year and next year, the other ones. My, uh, the ones I planted last year are already like this tall already. Ten, two, three feet almost. <sighs> That's so good. I got, I got a real nice asparagus bed going on right there. I'm going to have to make more. I'm going to have to make more beds. And, I just, just, and those ones I'm I'm going to do in, uh, in block. Okay. Yeah, because the block's going to be there forever. Concrete block is going to be there forever. Oh, sorry. 
I am like wiped today. Oh yeah. Like Grace so. says the rhubarb is doing great. Need to yeah. harvest some stock soon. It's nice, Grace. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I we we need to see pictures. What the hell? I mean, the rhubarb plant is actually beautiful and massive. Ah, oh, dude, I don't even care. Ooh, just suck it. I just don't know if I can grow it here. I've never tried yeah. to grow uh, rhubarb. I've done arugula, I think is what I was growing. I grew the same plant for almost two years before that thing finally kicked the bucket. <clears throat> I picked up some more uh, yesterday. Some what? Some more seeds. Oh, more seeds. I thought you said, I thought you said the name of a plant. And I was like, what? Ooh, purple lettuce. Yeah. Carrots are going to go out here soon. Those the uh, Nantes or the... Um... Tender sweet. Uh, tender sweet. And I got I got plenty of time to put that out. Yeah. I gotta work on mine. mine I think yeah. mine's about to kick the bucket. Uh, yeah. What? You, you then, know about that? That's only a, that's a seasonal plant. It's literally it's only supposed yeah. to survive about one year, but I've had the same plant for three years. Yeah. And uh parsnips. Parsnips, yes. That's an interesting one. That's like a cross between like a, a radish and a carrot. Yeah. Um, Don and I are thinking about doing a uh, next year. Um, it might be a little bit late to put these in. Yeah, it's a little bit late to put these in. No, it's, they're what, 65 days, I believe, on that? Yeah. Uh, no, if I, if I plant it in the shade, it'll probably do good. Maybe on the north side of the house. Where it gets some morning sun and some afternoon sun. Yeah, what's the uh, harvest? Uh, it's like 65 days, ain't it? Uh, days of harvest, 95. I still have time. 95? Oh, yeah, you got plenty of time. Oh, yeah. Because, I uh, mean, we're, we're literally just at the beginning. We're like, you and me both are in, technically in spring. Well, actually, at this point, we're now officially in summer. Summer, well, summer yeah. yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but we're thinking about... Uh, uh, doing the um, the parsnip, so I'll probably end up doing some in the greenhouse uh, over winter in the greenhouse. So they're going to be done at the same time as the um, um, the daikon radish. We're going to julienne them and then pickle them. Ooh, that'll be nice. Uh, Korean style. Ooh. Ooh yeah. Yes. <coughs> so we'll, we'll, have some, we'll, we'll probably do some uh, buck choy, uh, the daikon radish, and the parsnip together with an, with an onion. Ooh, that might be that. That'll be a spicy one. Oh yeah, can you imagine? Can you imagine the, the garlic and the parsnip burn? Oh, you you definitely you got to get some radishes in there if you're going to do it that way. Oh yeah, we're going to do the radish. We're going to just julienne them with the uh, mandolin. And, yeah, those uh, are going to be. Ooh, that is, that, that'll be. A, to it. That'll that'll have some spice to it. It won't be like a hot hot spice, but you'll taste a little bite. Oh oh yeah, it'll, it'll be a uh, an herb spice. Oh yeah. <laughs> especially with the garlic in there and everything. I mean, else. especially like, like what out of all of the like naturally grown herbs or vegetables, the I think the radish has the like strongest bite to it. Like depending on how the radish is grown. No. Um, I would. I'm gonna have to say either. Uh, um, what's that Japanese horseradish? Yeah. You know this. You know this stuff. That, uh, you know you put on your uh, your so-called. Um, that green shit. Yeah, wasabi. Wasabi. It, it, it's it's horseradish. Okay. <laughs> Hello, seafood and drinks. Hi, hey, seafood and drinks. How you doing? Wasabi. Yeah, wasabi. 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 <laughs> to, to me, it, it's an Asian horseradish. I don't think it's the Asian version of a hot pepper because it's a root. That stuff. Well, yeah, it's the root of what? Yeah, it's a root, just like horseradish, just like ginger. That's the one. Ginger's actually got a good bite to it too. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, it, it literally says wasabi or Japanese horseradish is a plant of the family mm -hmm. Rasasake mustard. So it's basically a mustard plant. That's another one. I would love to try to grow mustard seed, but God Almighty, a lot of that. Ooh. I mean, yeah, you'll probably bring in a lot of uh, wanted uh, butterflies. <clears throat> I get everything down here from, like, I, I don't think there's a variety of butterfly down here I don't get. Yeah. Like like I said, I miss the uh, the southwestern swallowtails. I think that's the only one I haven't seen, but that doesn't necessarily mean I don't have them. Yeah, I mean, there's several different species of them down in the, in the southwest. I mean, you're, you're talking a moth, you know, that's five inches across. Yeah, well, I've, dude, I've got hummingbird moths down here. Yeah. And... You, I've already seen a whole bunch of them suckers, and you're like, I thought for the first time, I, the first one I saw the other day, I was like, is that a grasshopper? And then I saw it again, and then like after the third time I saw it, I'm like, that's a damn hummingbird moth. Yeah. It's only about a two or three inch moth, but the thing's got a wingspan of like four inches. <clears throat> well, a lot of people don't understand that. Oh, you know, like the horned worm is actually a swallowtail. The problem with that is they destroy your crop. Yes, they do. They do. Like I said, I actually caught a swallowtail on one of my uh, citrus trees when I was in uh, Arizona. It was like, oh, really? Uh. Sometimes those things, if I'm in a really pissed off mood, I'll cut the, the, the pokey off. I'll, I'll take my, my cutters and I'll... <laughs> I'll tab that cut of the pokey, the little horn off. Yeah. See, see, the problem is that one looked like a, a snake. Yes, it was like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> like, yeah, you know. I'll, if, if I'm nice and I'm in a good mood, I'll stick, I'll grab them and I'll put them in the tree, because the tree's got thousands and thousands of leaves. If it eats, you know, a couple hundred leaves, whatever. Yeah. But you get that on a citrus tree or a small bush that, you know, you're trying to get things off, especially like, say, like a tomato plant, bell peppers, yeah. or a hot pepper plant. Dude, it'll wipe out the whole plant, like a whole, it'll, overnight, you'll, you'll plant it, yeah. it it'll eat oh, all yeah. the leaves off of it. Yeah, the telltale signs is you look for the droppings, and you give the plants a little, little bit of a shake. If you hear a little click, 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 click sound, you got them. Oh, I just look under the leaf. Because the, the droppings look like little short whiskey barrels. Like, yes. They look like little barrels. Like the old the, the, like the old Barg's root beer candies. Yes. That's what the droppings remind like me way, of. Way, way smaller, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's a miniature version of the Barg's root beer candies. I remember those things. Real, real I see miniature. those and I'm like, ooh, I got one on here. And I just start looking under the leaves because that's where they like to sit. Close pins work wonders. I just grab them by you just grab them by the horn. Yeah, I know. And they curl up and try to get you, but I'm I'm used to it, so I just grab them by that and I just pull them off, and then I'll go set them in the tree. No, I just use the the um, the clothespin method. They'll actually let go of the plant. Well, because they're being they're essentially being squeezed to death. Yeah, I'm not talking about the plastic ones. I'm talking about the wooden ones. You know that that hard spring. The plastic yeah, one. I mean. We could go this method, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't no, want to no. grab it and hear that. Yeah, so, yeah, the the wooden clothespins with the springs I found out works the best, especially if you're on a tomato plant because you try and pull them off, they can actually break the tomato plant when you pull them off. Oh yeah, they grip on there hard. Yep, and I found out that works the best. I've been using that method since I was a kid. <clears throat> Yeah, I usually if I if I'm out there working, I usually have my uh, my cheap hut my these things. I'm usually out there with these gloves, and I'll just grab the thing and just yank it off the plant. <laughs> like I, I don't even care. I'm like, get off my plant, stop eating my leaves. I'm trying to get a plant to grow. Because they they will you get two or three of them on one plant, and your plant especially is if it's only two feet tall, done that for. plant's gonna be wiped out. Oh yeah, they'll eat it. They'll munch that whole thing they'll all night it. long. They'll kill it. They will kill the plant. I've done the. I've had a bunch of like an infestation of those one time when I was growing lettuce, and I had a whole bunch of lettuce doing real well. And I got up, I checked it the next day. All my lettuce was eaten down to the roots. Yeah. 
I was like, what the heck munched this? Oh, no kidding. Found out there was a pile of baby hornworms. I was like, who are yeah, you so, little stinkers? Yeah, so, you know, if anybody's got tomato plants and they're dealing with the hornworms, go to Walmart, pick up a pack of those wooden springed clothespins. <sighs> just go in there, just clip onto them. Uh, if they don't let go right away, I just grab another clothespin and go to the next one. They will eventually fall off. The, and you won't break the plant. Yeah, especially when they get those little, when they're off to the uh, the sublaterals, you try and pull those uh, hornworms off. Well, they'll yeah, they'll break the sublateral. Yeah, they'll break that right off. Mm-hmm. Because <clears throat> they'll do it. They'll grab the they'll grab that side shoe branch and then they'll grab grab the main one and they'll stick like one set of grippers will be on the bottom and the other set will be on this like over here. <sighs> Here's those back legs. I'll just grip on. That's why, like I said, I gra you grab that horn, and they one whole side just comes <coughs> off, mm -hmm. and then you just pull them, and they just they, yeah, because they're they they think they're being attacked. Yeah, but the thing is, a lot of people are so scared of them, you know, they're really not going to hurt you. They'll just leave a mess on you because they regurgitate all over you. <laughs> yeah, but, they will. They're like grasshoppers. You grab a grasshopper wrong, it just sends out that gooey well, stuff. A right? Grasshopper will actually bite you too. They got to put mandibles on them. I mean, I, I mean, a hornworm, if it's large enough, can get a hold of your finger. Yeah, but the, the worst it's going to do is grip onto it. Yeah, that scared the crap out of you. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I'm like three or four years into this. I don't, it, I'm I'm so used to them. Yeah, I'm talking about for those 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 new people out there. Just yeah. grab the close pin and pop them on there. Grab a pair of leather gloves. If you're gonna, if you're, if you're that afraid of the worms, just grab a yeah. pair of leather gloves. Put some leather gloves on and grab them. They'll come off eventually. But uh, yeah, for for this for us for us seasoned gardeners, yeah, we, we literally we'll just grab them, pull them off the plant, and just set them somewhere else, or just throw them somewhere. If you throw them in the dirt, the birds will get them. Or the ants. I do that with the grubs, even though I know technically a grub is a beneficial creature at some point, at some stage in its life. Yeah, but, but my wife hates them. It takes things forever to get to their adult stage. Yeah, a whole year. <clears throat> That's when I, when I think the uh, <clears throat> the um, armadillo is digging up my yard, looking for grubs. Yeah, getting those big on. Dude, I've got fat grubs. I mean, them grubs are like huge. Yeah, and if, if anybody's wondering, they're the they're the May beetles, the May bugs, June bugs, May and June. Yeah, he does things. Those so ones that are those big hard brown ones that fly into the windows. That sounds oh. like it's gonna snap that through that window. Quack. Yep. Like the... <sighs> yeah. So you know those, those those are the June bugs. Yeah, they're the ones that make that horrible noise. I mean, you grab them, it's like. A... It's like stepping on a rat. <laughs> yeah, then we also got the big uh, cicada infestation this year over here on the uh, northeast. Thank God I have not had to deal with that. I I've had 17 years. Trees, but I've learned if, if you have a spotlight, here's the funny thing. You, spot, you shine a spotlight up and down in the tree and them suckers will stop. Yeah, earplugs. They only make noise at night, so if they think it's daytime, they stop. No, well, they'll, they'll do it in the daytime, too. They do, well, they do it more close to around sunset, you'll hear them. But again, if you have a really high-powered spotlight, you just shine at them in the trees, and they stop. I do it I do it all the time with this little tiny flashlight, and them suckers will stop the minute the light hits them. Yeah, like I said, the, all the rats and mice in the uh, forest here are going to go nuts for them. Yeah, that's Spot. a long way they got to climb up them trees, because they're usually at the top. They got to get there first. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The rats got to climb up the trees. There'll be so many of them, all the rats will be all fat. Yeah, you might have to get some uh, bigger T Rexes. <laughs> you might have to get the ones for the squirrels. Yeah, yeah what the uh, one tens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, might, you might have to change the bottom there. The grips, yeah. <laughs> Oh, like I said, I I almost had to go to that to that route with that one that one big rat if I didn't catch it. But I, had to, I had to use a a foothold to catch that rat. A one a one point five to catch that rat. 
It's a big rat if you have to use it's that. It's a big rat, yes. And that wasn't an easy trigger to step on either. <clears throat> that means that rat had some weight. Yeah, that was that uh, that 16-inch rat that I caught. Oh, yeah, that big, that big mamma jamma. It looked like a half a football. Yeah, no kidding. You, you've seen that one. It's not yeah, I, I, I saw that video on it. That, that definitely was a fat yeah. rat. Yeah, the, the, the biggest one I've caught recently is that 13-incher. That's still a good size rat. Yeah, it is. No, yeah, that, that's de definitely correct, Grace. They do not. They'll eat like a little bit here and there, but they, yeah, they're not as bad as hornworms and some caterpillars and locusts. And grasshoppers and locusts. Ooh, the one thing I hate is when I see a grasshopper and you get near it and it doesn't move, first thing I do is I yank that sucker out of the ground because I know exactly what it's doing. Yeah, BB gun. <laughs> I just I will I'll either yank it out of the ground or I'll stomp on it. Cause it, if grasshoppers are very skittish, you get near them, they move. If you yeah. get near a grasshopper and it's not moving, that's because it's got its butt stuck in the ground, dropping off eggs. Yep. And I do not want grasshoppers hopping all over my yard. Yes, like, it's great for the lizards, but. No, BB gun takes care of them. I just stomp on them. Or I yank them out of the ground and throw them, throw them out into the street. Let the birds deal with them. Or the ants. I'll only do the ants if I'm in a really bad mood and I decide to break off the back legs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, dude, I'm an a-hole when it comes to certain bugs. I will literally oh. devastate a bug and I will set it on an ant hill. I've done that with hornworms before. Oh, yeah, I, I have too when I was a kid. Oh, I'll, I'll grab those. If I have an established red ant hill anywhere around, I'll take that hornworm. I'll set that sucker right on top of the ant hill. Yeah, that's going to be the medium-sized red ants, not the big giant red ants or the big giant purple ants. They won't eat them. Oh, dude, I've got... Those are the harvesters. Yeah, we've got the red ants, we've got the black ants, and then we've got the red and black ants. And those are the those are the fairly large ants. Yeah, those... those... Fire ants. Those are going to be the uh, harvesters. Yeah, we got fire ants here. Jeez, that bad. Oh, I hate fire ants. So do I. Get that Amdro, man. Drop that around that hill and poof, oh, they're yeah. done. <laughs> or they'll just move. Oh, dude. I'll, I watched an ant one time take a freaking Amdro square, like a little bit of that Amdro, and that oh, yeah. sucker went probably about 15, 20 feet with that thing to its nest. I found out where that thing was, and I sprinkled some around it, and that thing was, two days later, that whole nest was done. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and it, do, it doesn't matter how high the brood count is on the inside of the nest if they're not being taken care of. Yeah, as soon as you get the queen, they're done. You get rid of all the workers, it doesn't even matter. The queen can't do shit without them. Yeah. She's because she's not getting any in. She's not bringing any fuel in. There's no, there's nothing to bring her any sort of sustenance. So once you get rid of them, even if the queen survives, queen's gonna be dead within another couple of days anyway due to lack yeah. of nutrients. Yeah. Woo! Alrighty, folks. I'm starting to wind down. Hang on, Cliff. Don't stay in the green room. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna. Head, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. So everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you for everybody for coming in. Um, and I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Stay safe out there and get outdoors and enjoy it. Anything from you, Cliff? Uh, I was going to say, just get outside. If you want to try your hand at growing, grow something. Catch it, grow it, cook it, eat it, serve it, swell it, save it, shave <laughs> it. I don't know. Yeah, I've got a lot. My brain is <laughs> mush. I I've been out in the sun all day long. No, I've been out in the... Uh, out in the humid air all day, even though I had cloud cover, it was just too humid and no breeze. Ooh, I, it, I got breezy earlier, like, but yeah, I was just still too hot. Yep. But anyway, folks, we will catch you on the flip side. See you all Thursday and Saturday for those that you that join us on Saturday. Yes, join us on Saturday.